Joe Rowland along with Jim Childs on Friday Night Lights here at Andover High School as the Huskies take on Mankato West in what feels like already a playoff game environment. Tonight, Huskies try to gear it up, but Jim, how do they top last week's performance in that win over St. Thomas Academy? I, you know, Joe, that's a great question. It's a super good game tonight. Uh, the Huskies ambushed the cadets last week. Uh, they scored 45 in the first half. Uh, looking for a high-tempo offense tonight, but they've got a really tough opponent. Well, Mankato West comes in, a team that finished second in the state last year. Both teams having their season's end, Andover and Mankato West by Elk River. So how do they get ready? What do we expect from Mankato West? Well, you know, they have an outstanding receiving core. You know, you will see Jalen Smith. Uh, we've got uh, du uh, Staley, two really good receivers. And Bark McGinnis is an outstanding quarterback, three-year starter. He's been in the big games before. This is not going to be any different for these guys. The, 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 the environment, which is awesome here in, at Husky Stadium, will not be an issue tonight for Mankato West. There's some swag, energy, and the juice of football in the air tonight. Coming your way next is the Huskies taking on Mankato West on QCTV. Back to the fence, and that's gone. There it is. Ace to win the set. It's caught. Back to the fence, and that's gone. There it is. Ace to win the set. It's caught. 20, 10, touchdown. This is going to be in the gap. Yes, yes. Joe Rulin joined along with the Huskies head coach, Tom DeVellis, and uh, 
Tom, we've got some energy and, and, and activity in the air tonight. Oh, yeah. This is a really good opponent, and it brings a lot of fans to the, the stadium, and so we just hope we have a great night. Each team each year seems to have their own personality, their own brand. How would you describe this year's team? Well, we're young, right? We, we didn't return a lot of guys from last year, but last week I thought their toughness, I thought last week their competition is what we're looking for. So it's week two. We're just hoping to build, and what we worry about is where we are in October. Very much. They hit the switch last week with the first, almost a perfect game. Kickoff return, uh, great offensive display, but tonight you got a different team. Mankato West, this kind of has the atmosphere of almost like an early playoff game. How do you prepare for a team like Mankato West? Well, there's two ideas. One of them is they're not in our section. So at the end of the day, for both of our teams, what matters is where we end in sections, right? And we want to be the number one seed. We want to win the sections. What this does for us early on in week two is it shows our kids where we're at. It shows us, you know, what we have when maybe we're in the face of adversity or where we're at with competing with a team that was in the state title game last year and returning 16 kids. Hey, Coach, good luck tonight, and thanks for joining us. All right, thanks. Appreciate it. and welcome to Husky Stadium. Tonight is Andover Youth Night and our Tackle for Cancer fundraiser. We welcome the players, families, and fans from Mankato West. As a high school within the Anoka Hennepin School District, tonight's athletic event is following the rules and regulations of the Minnesota State High School League. As team captains, we support and lead the expectations of good sportsmanship. We ask everyone to show respect and sportsmanship to both teams and our officials throughout the game. Please refrain from any negative or unsportsmanlike behaviors. Let's make tonight's game a great experience for all players and students from both schools. Thank you for your support and enjoy the game. Well, the table has been set. Joe ruling along with Jim Childs, and this is the Friday Night Lights feature, and it has the roar and store of postseason football and Jim just to think this is just the second game of the season the home opener for Andover and uh, fight cancer night on top of it youth football night it's all packed into the excitement and, and in this environment yeah in this uh, you know Andover has a great uh, game day experience tonight it seems like it's elevated times 10 uh, we we're walking through through uh, the uh, the stands about 40 minutes before the game and they're packed People are excited about this team. They're excited about this matchup. And boy, Joe, we've got a great football team coming in. We certainly do. And I'll tell you, St. Thomas Academy, that win, outstanding. You couldn't be shot out of a cannon and hit stride middle midseason any quicker, especially with the Iafe 92-yard kickoff return to start the game and up 48-15 at the end of the first half to a team like St. Uh, St. Thomas Academy. Uh, yeah, and, and uh, you know, when we, we had a chance to talk to Coach DeVellis and, and, and this week, and he, I, I, we asked what was the biggest surprise about that, and he said the score. He, it was, uh, you know, you're, you're going up a quality, of going against a quality opponent, and they were able to execute on that first, that first night. Not a lot of penalties, uh, good execution, not a lot of mistakes, uh, no turnovers, and if the Huskies can do that again tonight, I think Mankato West is in for a long evening. And here we go, the Andover Huskies 2023 20, version already 1-0. As is Mankato West, who had a 42 to nothing win over Northfield. And, and that's a team with some serious swag and talent just across the way in the white, Jim. Yeah, and, and the confidence, you know, over the last three years, since 2020, uh, they have been 31 and one. Uh, you can't get any better than that. Uh, the one loss was last year to, to Elk River, which was the best team in 5A. And uh, the Huskies ended their season. I know we'll talk about that later as we go to Elk River as well. But uh, these two teams have lost five games in the last in the last three years. And that's uh, uh, a testament to actually four years net counting this year, a testament to how good both these programs are. And as uh, we get set, and also tonight, you can see the pink, and that is certainly tackled cancer night. Uh, combined here with youth night, uh, we're going to 
get a moment and hear a little bit from uh, Randy Shaver here in just a few minutes. Uh, more a little bit about the value of Tackle Cancer Night and the impact of it as well. So uh, certainly everyone's kind of been touched with somebody with cancer or a couple. So uh, it certainly hits his impact. And I'll tell you, you see the numbers and you see the results and, uh, and you see the pink uh, out there and Jim, you're wearing that as well. Uh, yeah, and it, it's a great uh, cause. And we'll and during halftime, we're going to have uh, Susie Heller up here, who will have a chance to tell us about this. And let's listen to uh, the message from Randy Shaver right now. Hey, Andover football fans, Randy Shaver from Care TV and the Prep Sports Extra. I'm celebrating 40 years of the Prep Sports Extra this fall, but I can truly say the last 11 have been the most fulfilling with the addition of Tackle Cancer. Let's face it, we all know someone who was fighting cancer or either won the battle or lost. Doing nothing is not an option. We have to do something to help our cancer community. In the last 12 years, the MFCA Tackle Cancer Program has raised over $2.9 million. That's an amazing number, and coaches across the state deserve our thanks for making TC a big part of their football experience. That money supports cancer research and patient aid in our state through the Randy Shaver Cancer Research and Community Fund. All that money stays in Minnesota. 93 cents of every dollar we raise goes to the charity. Last year, thanks to Tackle Cancer, we allocated over $1 million to cancer research and statewide patient aid projects. We project that number to be higher next year, around 1.2 million, with Tackle Cancer once again leading the way. Dave Nelson, who started TC along with the MFCA, has set a goal of $500,000 this fall. Last year, TC set a record at just over $473,000. Every dollar makes a difference. So thank you, Andover, for all you do, and not only making football special in your community, but making an extraordinary effort to support Minnesota's cancer community as well. Thank you, and go Huskies. Appreciate that message from Randy Shaver and the Tackle Night has been launched and kickoff here tonight at Andover High School. And so has the emotion of this early impact game as we have Mankato West, the team that ended up second in the state losing to Elk River, taking on the Huskies and the Huskies played Elk River to one of the best, I think, football games in the state last year, losing in the section final to Elk River. So two teams who had their season ended by Elk River now meeting here on this venue. Yeah, Joe, that was the last time we were on. The, what an emotional game. Might have been one of the best games that, that, I, that I think you and I have probably ever called. But uh, it was just an outstanding job. The Huskies, uh, an outstanding game between two really, really well-coached teams. Again, this is going to be tonight. The uh, Huskies are going to receive the ball first. You mentioned 92-yard kickoff kick last year. Back deep will be Super DeMario and uh, Obi Afe uh, back deep for the Huskies. You mentioned Iafe last week, a 92-yard kickoff return, took it to the house on the opening kickoff against St. Thomas Academy, both these teams. It was Andover 7-3 and three last year. Meanwhile, for Mankato West, they finished 12-1. and one. Again, they're only lost in the state championship. The both teams coming into tonight, both 1-0, and oh, and we're underway in the kickoff here from the Scarlets goes through the corner of the end zone. Couldn't have strategically put that any better with the Mankato West kicker. So the Huskies will get their first possession and their home opener at the 20 yard line on just an outstanding evening for high school football. Yeah, there you see uh, Coach Tom DeVellis and the starters. It will be uh, on the front line. It'll be Luke Wolf, Beberg, another Beger, Holden Beberg, Pelkey, Stone, and uh, Boynton, uh, winners Boynton. In the backfield, uh, it will be uh, uh, Demario Davenport with uh, Luke Denicky, uh, Sam Audette, uh Cameron Begali, who had a great 
uh, night last week, and then Johnny Fry as a wideout. And the quarterback is Chase Pemberton, the senior, has had a great weekend, had a great week night against St. Thomas, 17 of 22. Thank you, Jim. Well done. And the Huskies come out in their offset spread tempo offense. I'll tell you, they want to set that tempo here, keeping this as Pemberton tries to break a tackle and picks up maybe a yard, yard and a half <laughs> as coming with a 4-3 defense tonight is the uh, Mankato West Scarlet. You'll see them line up and they're set to go. You can see the Huskies' key thing here is set that tempo. We want to move. We, uh, Hey, every play we're getting back and letting it go. Here's Davenport, jumps around but cannot get outside. The edge got clamped up inside. That'll be maybe back to the line of scrimmage and leave ourselves here a third and seven now for the Huskies. Yeah, a, qu a quick uh, on the front line for the, uh, uh, for the Scarlets, Nelson, Schmidt, Meidel, and Blackstead finish the rest of the starting lineups in a second. Huskies on the offset spread here. Two receivers to each side, left and right and just to the right. Of Pemberton. You're getting a look there at Davenport. Shot back here, has some time. A wide open chance to Magali. He gets it to the 30, to the 10. In the house, the Huskies <laughs> score first. Cam Bagali. 77 yards, Joe. What First a... pass completion, and it was just between the numbers. Bagali got the conference, uh, the covers that he wanted here. And little... Pemberton throws a strike. That little slip by Pemberton and some pressure coming off his backside. But Bagali just beat him on a post. It was uh, a, a great route, a great pass. And one thing we'll see, Pemberton is outstanding with... Uh, uh, with his uh, throws and his accuracy. Great start for the Huskies. Couldn't start any better. Told Katega about uh, three plays and about a minute. Snap, spot, kick is up and it is good. Connected by Carter Eklund, who was perfect last weekend, not only on uh, extra points, but also on a couple of field goals. Caps it and Andover jumps out. Boy, you just couldn't script the start again here tonight. No, and it was single coverage. Uh, Bagali just beat the guy, beat his uh, his uh, coverage, just cutting it on the inside on that post. A great pass again, right in the shirt pocket for the Huskies. And uh, boy, shell shock again last week on the kickoff. This week, a minute and 16 seconds in, and they've got another. Uh, they've got another lead. And that's the one you'll take another look at game field and see what transpired. But th they got the ISO that they wanted. Did uh, Bagali, and there you get a look at him, a, a point guard on the basketball team. And I'll tell you, he lit it up on that opening drive, got the separation he needed, and also an impressive uh, week last year, uh, last weekend in the win as well for the Huskies receiving. He had nine catches, 91 yards last week underway here on the kick picked up at the five now advancing ahead scarlets continue to power their way down and then thrown down at about the 29 yard line by andover first possession of the game set up now for mankato west yeah that was carter uh Bersha, the running back with a nice run up the middle about 29 yards good starting position for the uh for the scarlets a uh, couple of things uh, as, a, as we get rolling uh bart mechanich is uh, the quarterback, is, he is scheduled to go to Bemidji, he's committed to Bemidji. 2,400 yards last year, 28 touchdowns, no interceptions. He's a machine back there. Mackinick now brings the team to the lineup, sets up on their formation. Like to run some pistol here, and this one's a, a pistol single set, a handoff up the middle, and that goes ahead to Bursaw. Bursaw last weekend. 13 carries, 41 yards, and two TDs for the 5'11", 185 pounds senior. There you get a look at Bailey Taylor on defense, nose guard Trayman Davis, Caden Weichel at defensive end, Luke Beck as a linebacker, Caleb Weichel also as the other linebacker, Austin Begali, he's at the linebacker, followed by Ben Peters, McIntyre Grease at a corner, Obi Iafe at one other corner, and Luke Denicky, who had an interception last week is also one of the safeties were set here three receivers to the near side 
quick out, completed. Look out, this guy's dangerous. Juggled it at first and then tried to settle it, but you gotta like that pass completion, a quick out to Jalen Smith, who's headed to the University of Minnesota. Yeah, Jalen Smith, who had 49 catches last year, uh, eight touchdowns, was the number one target uh, for Mackinich last last year. Uh, nothing's changed. He, again, is uh, uh, just an outstanding route runner, good hands, and he is fast. Third and about four now for Mackinick and the Mankato West Scarlets. 12 and one last year. And they need to get somebody off the field here before they get too many men. And they might get called here. Nope, it'll be a handoff up the middle it goes. And they were trying to switch locations on uh, one of the players. And finally, it took them a while, but they got it set. They were trying to bring over Hudson Maynard. Yeah, so the uh, that was... Uh, the, the Mackinich runs a wildcat by himself when you see the two H-backs out there, 82 and 87. Very good blockers. They're going to go for it. It's fourth and one. This is a big play right now, Joe. This, we'll sounds, this sounds a little like the Detroit Lions. Yeah, yes, fourth yes. and one inside their own territory, getting ready for the snap. It's back again. Wildcat hanging on the big bust away, making a nice touchdown saving tackle. Pulled down by Maynard. Otherwise, Mackinick was gone. Yeah. He just found the crease. So you, you see right there, both uh, those tight ends back there as an H-back, and they just clogged it up. He was able to find the road uh, to go, and first down, 17-yard gain. Mankato West last year, 193 average, 193 in the air, and 186 on the ground. Snap back again. Mackinac, nice tackle as he tries to bounce outside. Coming up and making that strong tackle. Saw yes. that. And Denicky just huge on that piece. And one of the X factors, Jim, we talked about was making those tackles, solidifying them. I said in game film, you could see that uh, their opponent last week, Northfield, missed a lot of tackles. And it's a key thing to wrap it up and finish those tackles in the play. Yeah, Husky, Huskies are lucky. Denicky plays safety, but he's 6'5", 215. Large safety you can come up and fill as a linebacker. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. Snap back, Mackinac takes a look. A quick out to his favorite receiver, Smith there. And Smith powers his way ahead beyond the first down markers. That'll be a first down with 7.30 to go here in this first quarter. This has not disappointed so far any of the fans here. And, and a good turnout. And I'm guessing more fans coming from Mankato West away just across the way. Yeah, and, and this is this is Mankato's offense, Mankato West's offense. They are methodical. They they they'll go big, and then they'll go th like they are right now with four wideouts. They'll spread a little bit more to the left down below. Keep an eye on Staley. 130 yards, two touchdowns, and this one's a dump there ahead in advance. And I'll tell you, they are very creative in that set. They bring a pistol single set. They'll bring a pistol ball right. They'll do the empty backfield. They'll do the pistol H back. Yeah, this was just a misassignment. Somebody was supposed to cover Kovarinski, and he was wide open. And a uh, uh, good gain of 17 for uh, the West uh, Scar or West Scarlets. Kovarinski, six foot one, 195 pounder, heading to Augustana. Play football next year. All the way to the left bottom of the screen. You get a look here again, and that's at Staley. This is a fake handoff. Now can he keep it? Mackinick eludes one tackle. Coming back up and Denicky again. Just locked up tackle. He closed in. Got him not before. Pick up a five on the play. Yeah, Denicky did a nice job of feeling. You know, the, the Huskies coaching staff were concerned about the running ability, ability of uh, Mackinick. And uh, he, he shows it. He is so good in the pocket. And he can throw on the run too. Here comes Mackinich now bleeding the team, and they'll set back to just a offset here. Pistol formation, strong to the left. Handoff this time to the running back. Nowhere to go. Picked up, put down. Bursall had nowhere to go. Tried to bounce it outside, but he's locked up by the defensive line. Yeah, Bubba Winkle came up and just filled the hole. Great job. He had an outstanding uh, week last week and this week. Actually, that was Luke Beck who came up and filled the hole, 6 2 225. Great job by the linebacker. That leads third and four now for Mankato West. They are trying to counter, kind of doing a uh, an old traditional drive. Mix of uh, run and pass. The Huskies just went for Temple. 
third play of the game. And we'll have a timeout for Mankato. This is a critical timeout. critical juncture Mankato right now, West. third and four. That's the first of the half. And uh, they're, they know they're going to be in a track meet, so every possession is, is important to make sure you try to score that touchdown rather than settle for the field goal. So, uh, and they haven't been able to stop them yet on, on either side. Yeah, it, 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 when you look at this, when you look at Mackinich's numbers, and he'll be, as you mentioned, Jim, going to Bemidji State last year and leading the team to a 12 and run record, he threw for almost 2,500 yards, 28 touchdowns, and zero interceptions. Yeah, he doesn't make mistakes. He, he does not look off a receiver. You'll, you'll watch it. We'll watch that tonight. But he has got pinpoint accuracy, and he makes the right decision. If he doesn't have that open, he'll make the run and try to get past uh, uh, try to try to get something uh, available on his feet. Yeah, and last year running the ball, he also took him for 13 touchdowns, 13 rushing touchdowns last year. So, pretty impressive. They outscored their opponents last year. Did Mankato West 448 to 131? And you're probably asking, what about Andover? Well, Andover did the same. They outscored their opponents 478 to 241. The difference for both of these teams, they get out fast in that first yeah. quarter. Yeah, and you know the the. And we're going to go with a Wildcat again with both those two linebackers. Yep, both those H-backs get yep. up inside, and he's got a little alley. He tiptoes, finds his way through, and I, I think, think he's got it. Well, close, he's, oh, it's not. Gonna be, yeah, it's going to be really close, Joe. I don't know if he's got it or not. You could see that he was trying to just jab step his way through, and then finally That's made a good. surge, and it is so close it is short. It's fourth down, yeah, big. Fourth and about a foot. And this is right there at Coach Weichel, the defensive coordinator. At the nine yard line here, Mankato West. And the Scarlets trying to advance this a foot for a first down, and he has that. And just a little bit more, Mackinich takes it to the five. First down and goal to goal. And <clears throat> I'll tell you, this first quarter drive is exactly what I expected. Just a very, a very methodical yep. drive, mixing up pass and runs all so proficient and this is a team that you know has lost just one game in the last two years yeah they're well coached and uh they reload just kind of like andover rather than rebuild they just reload first down goal to go fakes the handoff a pass over the middle picked it's off by andover or oh, did they drop it, it? dropped it that was jumped in that boy luke, luke beck jumped in Jumped the route. What a great anticipation by Luke Beck, who just had a, a nice tackle. He comes in, sees it, and, man, I think he was thinking six on that one. <laughs> Frustrating, but uh, good pre pass breakup. Right spot there. Just couldn't hang on, and we've got ourselves second down. Goal to go from the six. Here come, again, a look at uh, the west, Mankato West. Strong to the left. Fakes the handoff, takes it back himself, drives it to the goal line, and in. A good power move that time, right up the middle by Mackinich. And they have brought it back to within. Just 1.76 here for Mankato West, 439. Yeah, right. Just a great job on blocking. They, everyone was, everyone had a hat on him, and Beck and Bob Winkle just couldn't keep him out of his end zone. Uh, on that drive, eight rushes by uh, Mackinich. Love that. Thanks, Jim. Eight drives, and there's the extra point. That's good. Wasn't pretty, but it is good. It's 7-7 seven, seven. as these two big-time programs are throwing some big punches here in this first quarter. But uh, 439 remains, and let's just see how well the Huskies can strike back. As I mentioned last year, a team... They outscored their opponents last year in that first quarter. Uh, one, excuse me, it was uh, 124 to 35. Meanwhile, in the second quarter, it was 157 to 59 is what they did in outscoring. Talking to head coach Mike, excuse me, to uh, coach DeVellis, he said tempo. We're all about tempo. That's such an important part for us. And we want to get that ball, get it in our hands, and try to see if we can wear down that team, take some more snips. And, and a lot like the, what the Oregon Duck offense was a while, uh, about a 15, yeah. 10, 15 years ago. And speed and space, but also tempo. Yeah, one thing that, that uh, you know, it is warm out today. The sun's going down, it's cooling down a little bit, but uh, long bus ride, and there are quite a few 
Mankato West players that play both ways. We'll have to see if that actually comes into consideration and uh, whether we've got some cramping. Acom getting ready to kick off here for the West. He kicked it uh, into the end zone last time and he'll give this boot almost to the exact same location and it'll be a touchback as Iafe that time had it in his hands but once those feet hit the ground it's a touchback. So well, let's see what else can happen here for the Huskies as now they get their second look offensively. Yeah, I think the, I think um, as <laughs> their plan is don't allow uh, either Davenport or Iafe uh, had to have any chance to run that ball out. Iafe last year had 301 yards rushing, meanwhile receiving 357 and 18 catches and five touchdowns. He's set just to the right of Pemberton. Now moves right, looks for the quick out pass here, fakes left, goes inside, now bounces to the outside and advances all the way be near the first down marker. Unless they had him marked out earlier ahead of time. That'll be second down and one. Pick up of nine, and you can see so many ways to use Davenport. Four receivers now to the left. Left all alone on the right side. They're gonna fake the run and hold on to it. This time a quarterback keeper picks up six, does Pemberton, and a first down for Andover. Yeah, so that's his best run of the season so far. Pemberton made a good decision. He had, he had uh, 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 Davenport and just decided to keep it himself, cut the defense, and nice pickup of seven. Quick setup, lock and load, get at it here. It's four receivers to the left, and that's the side on the offset. Pemberton again holds on. He's got some running room ahead of him. He's to the 50, breaks the tackle, to the 40, to the 30, and thrown out of bounds at about the 20-yard line. And just an unbelievable run there for Pemberton as they set the receivers all the way through all four to the left, including Pemberton on that left side. He came around to be the outlet and held on to it there and broke a tackle. I'll tell you, he broke that tackle all alone and had a chance to go a little bit farther, but a good tackle bringing him down on that play yeah. by Trevor Sheldra. Holdrum with a great, uh, Holdrum uh, 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 Bieberg with a great block on this. First down here, looking down the middle, has another opening, throwing the receiver open, toe drag, swag, and a touchdown. That's Bengali again. What great touch. Unbelievable touch by, by Pemberton. And a 20 yard touchdown. To, uh, this uh, this may have, there's uh, former coach Rip Wilkie, head coach there, cheering on the Huskies. But look at this pass. Goes back, looks off the receiver. The safety gets locked up. And just a beautiful drop right to Bengali. Gets both the feet in. That would have been good if he was playing on Sundays. Toe drag swag for Bengali. And throwing him open was Pemberton for a second touchdown here in this first quarter. Snap spot. Kick is good, and uh, Eklund with the extra point to make it 14-7, and once again, Huskies answer with just probably, I think it was a minute and 20 seconds with the time of that drive. Minute and four seconds. So, so, so far, the, the time of possession has been uh, two minutes and 20 seconds total, and 160 total yards of offense for the Huskies. Uh, they're dismantling West's defense. They're finding some great spacing, and you can tell they've got some different packages uh, tonight. The four receivers to the left really open up that backside for Pemberton, and Pemberton showing that, hey, you know what, I can break some tackles. Last year, as a backup quarterback, he was 25 of 31 for 360 yards and four touchdowns, and just minimal running uh, for him last year. But he has found his target, Begali. Well. Holy cow, Bagali. Yeah. He had, again, nine catches, 91 yards last weekend. He's got, he's got two for 97 so far today, and we're just about out of the first quarter. Kickoff here for the Huskies, picked up by the West, and they love oh. that contact. <laughs> just into the middle of what looks like a concrete spool and brought down. Well, you can see right there. You can see on the special teams how much emotion is out there because there, that was a hard run and a hard tackle. This, uh, uh, the juices are flowing on both sides. Setting up now, 3.34 to go in this first quarter. Certainly not a lack of action 
An offensive display by both of these squads as Mankato West will take their second possession of the game at their own 23-yard line. Mackinac brings it up. He looks three receivers to the left, two to the right. Cutting across, big pass. Kins up, continues to move ahead, and you can see the size right there, Jim, of Brody Kowarowski, who has his second reception, but he picked up about seven yards from the time he had initial contact. Yeah, it, really a nice play, and, and the, that's a wide open part of the zone. It's right in that uh, that uh, little uh, sweet spot there where the linebacker is is moving forward to, to, uh, to keep the run honest, and that opens up with that play action. Pistol again, just to the right. That is the strong side handoff this time. Orso up the middle, finds a seam and takes it about eight yards before he's tackled. One thing the Huskies are doing, uh, Aafe, who's their best cornerback, is shadowing Smith. Wherever Smith goes, that's where Aafe is going. And uh, that'll be quite a matchup as we get into the night uh, on, on both sides. See, they're just doing a little work on uh, Chase Pemberton there, checking in on him. Making sure he is fine. As they get a look here and now we head back to the play. Second and one now for Mankato West. Their second drive of the game. Snap back, looking to cross. Contact goes down. Oh. Picked up. Kowarski again. Back shoulder toss. Breaks the tackle and walks his way into the end zone. And striking just as quickly as the Huskies did. This time, Mankato West. Draws themselves within one point on a beautiful toss by Mackinick. And he connects again, as I mentioned, with uh, Kovaroski. Yeah, Kovaroski with a four, with a 56 yard touchdown. Uh, that's his third catch, and all have been double digits right now. He's uh, sitting at 89 yards. In for the extra point. Setting up here is Ben O'Neill. Excuse me, not Mo O'Neill, but this is Femright. Femright gets a snap spot. Kick is up, and we got it good. 14-14. 2.17 to go. And look at the strike just before he was hit. Yeah, really good pressure, but good presence by Mackinac to be able to get it to Kovaroski. He's been a weapon. He's the, he's the number three receiver, and he's been a weapon. Uh, and it was a nice, good hands. Back shoulder toss. I think Tony could have used those hands last <laughs> night uh, for the Chiefs. But a beautiful catch. Good lead through to the back shoulders. Got that separation. And Mackinac has been dynamite, just has Pemberton. And I don't think Pemberton's going to be going in for the next series. He had his shoulder pads off. Uh, Might have been in concussion or something. We'll get uh, some things checked out here. And there you get a look at yep. some dancing down there by the mascot. Busting some moves. So Hudson Maynard will come in for the Huskies. At Pemberton, uh, I, I, yeah, I think it, uh, it looks like you said they were checking out the eyes to make sure everything was, the cobwebs are still there. 2.17 to go. Both teams have exchanged two touchdowns and two drives. And a chance here for Mankato West. See if they can make their first defensive stop after this kickoff. In the end zone, whistled down there, now return. And the Huskies last year as a team, 260 yards in the air is what they averaged, and then 197 yards rushing. So Hudson Maynard will come in as uh, the Huskies. He's a junior. He got some playing time last year as a sophomore, and uh, last week, uh, I believe he was one for three last week. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, this system doesn't uh, it, it it doesn't matter who's a quarterback as long as you can get it to your playmakers uh, it can work and he's a good quarterback good athlete and good leader chance here for the Huskies now as they try to go three for three on their possessions here in this first quarter a handoff goes left side and Davenport so you'll probably see either a lot of short passes here just trying to get the confidence going here the backup quarterback, Hudson Maynard. And some maybe some quick burst and runs. This time three receivers to the right and to the left in motion. Cover this way, there's the handoff. Getting around the ends, Bagali trying to
beat the defensive ends around, but I'm not sure that uh, he made much progress. I think he got about a yard. I think, yes, so it'll be third and seven right now. Uh, good job on the containment. It, the, the, the Scarlets knew exactly where they were going, though. That was a jet sweep that they had read. We'll see if uh, this is uh, Hudson Maynard's uh, bread and butter right now. We'll see where he comes out. Three to the left, single receiver to the right for Andover. And the right is Denicky. He's the big target. See if they can find him in the middle. He's got some separation. Moving ahead, chance for a first down. Sliding and advancing. And Hudson Maynard comes up big time. Saw the gap and scrambled for the first down. Hey, great job. I mean, what what poise to be able to just pull it down. Let's get it. Let's just get a first down. Let's let's get three more sets, uh, a fresh set, and let's get after it. He was kind of determined right from the start. Didn't see what he's what he wanted, and he pulled it down. Great job by the Huskies line to kind of open up that line, open up that hole for Maynard. In motion, Davenport gets it outside. It'll be a run. Kicks out one, misses the tackle, and we get a penalty flag coming down, and he advances for about a seven-yard gain, but this, I think, might be coming back yeah, I think after it was, some holding. I think it was Danicky who had a hold. We'll see as we get into this, but... A good spot. And those are great passes to kind of get that confidence yep. going. Uh, they're, they're not easy either. They're, they're, I mean, you've got to be able to hit a, a, a side-moving target and uh, get it where he can get up to full speed, and I mean, Davenport can get up to full speed in about a second. He is quick. The conference has completed. There's no flag on the play. All right. It'll be a first down and over. Apparently that's a flag on the officials <laughs> for throwing the flag. But well, here, uh, here's what I think it is. I think it was uh, I think it was a backward pass, so they, they and they had linemen down the field. So gain of eight. Nice, nice job. And over. Three receivers to the right in the group. Trio there. Snap back. This is could be a double pass. It is Denicky. He's gonna lead it ahead and drops it yeah, just it. behind. Had the defender beat, we're gonna get pass interference here on the pass attempt at that time to Johnny Fry. Yeah, Fry had a beat and uh, Denicky just put a little bit too much air under it. Uh, great creative uh, uh, play by Develis. And we'll hear Matt Olson here. Pass interference on the defense, number three. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot results in a first down. And, and Denicky on that throw, you know, trying to be maybe a little too secure and safe yep. with that toss. Had Fry open. Yeah, there was, there was, there was yeah, there was nothing that uh, Smith had, could do. He had to get, he had to basically tackle Fry. 15-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. Not at all like the NFL. We've got quads here to the right. And set now for Andover on the near side. Maynard fakes the handoff, keeps it himself, and moves it along. He's running with some conviction and confidence already. Pickup of about four on the play there for Maynard. Yeah, he's he's much better on his feet than probably Pemberton is. Um, we'll have to see what uh, Pemberton's got his elbow in a sling. So possibly not a concussion. That looks like that's just a... Injured elbow. Second and six. Late pitch that time, but breaking the tackle, and here comes an opportunity for Bagali. Bagali on the burst broke the tackle, and then got a surge of about 10 yards to pick up the first down and take the ball down to the Mankato West 33 yard line. And quickly to the line, here comes Andover, just 15 seconds left in this first quarter, but they love the pace. Davenport moves from the right to the left in motion. Bagali, they'll hold it on taking on the handoff. Absorbs a couple of big shots, but picks up three yards. And it'll be second and seven for Andover as we start the beginning of the second quarter. And Jim, what an explosive start to this first. Yeah, and uh, Huskies with their core, starting quarterback down. And uh, they are answering, so 14-14 at the end of one. Second quarter coming up next.
you're not going to get it all right. Just make sure you nail the big stuff. Like making sure your kids are in the right seat for their age and size. Get it right at NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. If you're buzzed and doing this, to make yourself feel okay to drive, ZWX. You're not okay to drive. Y G K L V W. Uh, regular you. Second quarter just underway. First snap here. Looking to the right, rolling to the right, and trying to hit the receiver there, unable to connect. On that pass attempt by Hudson Maynard. Again, you may hear Hudson Maynard throwing. That's correct, because Pemberton looks like he's done for the night. A sling on his left arm, around his left arm and elbow. So we haven't received anything official yet, but we'll keep you posted. It's a 14-14 tie, tie in the two drives he did leave Pemberton he found Bagali it's been the Bagali show he's run the ball well and two touchdown receptions already for Bagali as we are just underway here in the second rolling to the left finding a gap finding a receiver just over the top of Bagali that time good look good thought but just time out of the reach of Bagali yeah well so we'll have a fourth down here uh, and uh, the offense will stay on it would have been nice to get maybe about four yards and make this a little bit uh, easier on a fourth and eight, uh, like a, instead of a fourth and four. Both these defenses very strong. In fact, last year for Mankato, they had 89 tackles for a loss, 31 sacks and 13 interceptions. The Huskies now ready for the fourth and seven play. Breaking a tackle here, continuing alive, losing one tackler, but gobbled up and brought down on a textbook tackle there by the Scarlets, that will bring the uh, drive to an end there for Ando. The first time they have not scored on their third drive, so two for three on their possessions thus far. Yeah, he's got uh, he's got some ice on his shoulder. That's Chase Pemberton right there. He's uh, he's done for the evening. At uh, least you got to be happy. I mean, it, I'm not happy that he has a sling on, but versus the right uh, elbow, uh, having it on the left. We'll see what transpires and see if we can get the story on what transpired there as Mankato West has their third possession and they start this possession at the 28 yard line, their own. Yeah, the, the Huskies right now need to come up, defense needs to step up. Handoff shut down, nowhere to go, may have even lost a yard on that handoff to Bursaw. Yeah, a nice job by Tremaine Davis, the junior who uh, uh, is an outstanding wrestler, two, uh, two times, two time wrestler uh, at the state tournament. Last okay. week, Mankato West, 346 total yards. Uh, they and they went over Northfield, 279 passing and 67 rushing. Sorry, Jim, I want to interrupt. We've got two to the right, two to the left for the receivers and on the offset pistol formation to the right. Looking across, oh. Mackin, it's almost picked off. That's two interceptions that Andover has had but not able to collect and retain possession. Ben Peterson had it, he had a pick six right there, uh, but great coverage, that comes up a third and 10. And uh, Huskies haven't had uh, the Scarlets in, the th uh, in a third and 10, we'll have to see what they did. Great job by the linebackers to fall back into coverage, then that took away that, that uh, long slant. McIntyre, Grease, cornerback all the way to the right side, to the left is Smith, he's being Closely guarded there again by Odobi. For a second of here, long pass here, trying to stretch it, reaching up, interception pulled down by Denegy. He climbed the ladder and pulls down his second interception of the year. That was sensational. Well, defense stepped up right now. That is the first interception of Bart Haganis's career, high school career. You might as well save that ball by Luke Dennecke, what a great, elevates, good defense on the, as a safety, and a great coverage by the Huskies. Just as they were getting ready to take that snap, I was following McIntyre Grease out to that side, 
And they were targeting Staley, a six foot two, 185 pound receiver. Denicky kind of switched down and favored that side, but boy, they used his whole six foot five frame. He looked like he was bringing a rebound down in basketball. So first turnover of the game. Meanwhile, here's a chance for the Huskies to counter, punishing and taking a hard hit, but not before picking up five as Maynard. Good pick up there. He's keeping them honest with that ability to run. Yeah, Owen Schmitz is the uh, the third backup just in case uh, that happens. Uh, That's funny. I was just thinking <laughs> that myself, and you just mentioned it. Uh, good timing. Second and six, I guess, is what they'll call it. A quick out here, and trying to break the tackle is Davenport. He does. A nice back by Bagali. Bagali with that block, and now uh, they're going to call the penalty on that. I was wondering if they were yeah, if they would or not, but uh, that's a late flag. They're going to. Uh, if you look at the, it's a pass. It's been more of a, a lateral out yeah. to the side. Block in the back on the offense. Number one, ten yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay second down. Either way, if it's a run or a pass, that block in the back is what they're gonna get you for the penalty. And you can see a good angle here. Actually, that was more of a forward pass. Yeah, it, it was, and I'll tell you what, how impressive is it for Davenport to be able to even catch that with a Scarlet draped upon him. You may need to watch as uh, the Kiddo West defenders may be looking to go pick six on another opportunity like that. And as well, 10 and change to go here in the second quarter, 10 minutes. 12 seconds to go, 14-14 tie. Both teams have exchanged touchdowns in that first quarter. And the Huskies are looking at a second and 15. Here we get a look at Maynard trying to elude a tackle. Eludes left, continue on his feet, shakes two tacklers, now dumps it off to Davenport. Davenport wrestles his way down to the original line of scrimmage, which is the 38, and that'll leave third and 10. How elusive on that play was Maynard. Oh, what a great job by Maynard. He's good on his feet. And to get it to your playmaker and have him weave his way through traffic, it makes it an, a much easier third and 10 than, than a, could be a third and 25. Got some serious instincts as Kelvin O'Connor was closing in on him. And he eluded a couple of chances for a sack. This was a team that had 31 sacks last year, Mankato West. Three receivers to the right. Bagali was the wide one. He's going to try to let his Maynard run for that first down, but uh, they just couldn't. That's O'Connor once again. Well, O'Connor right now, his job is just to spy Maynard. He, uh, he is sitting there as a linebacker and waiting for Maynard to go one way or the other. Uh, and uh, they started to break, the, the pocket started to break down quickly. And uh, this will be a punt. And it'll be by Luke Denneke. O'Connor, a big fellow, 6'3", 190. I wouldn't want him shadowing me. <laughs> I'm going to watch on my way to the car after the game. So we've got the first punt of the night here for Andover for either team, rather. Low snap on this, but it gets it. Not quite turning over the spiral, but picked up at the 35 in the first tackler gets down and brings down. That's number 10, L. Staley. Well, Huskies had a three and out last time. Like you, like we had mentioned, there's got to be some urgency on this defense to continue with this. We've got 8:27. They had a long, methodical drive to score on that first uh, in that first drive in the first quarter to tie it up. And the Scarlets, uh, we'll see if uh, if they spread it out again and see if they can throw it. Fourth drive of the game here for Mankato West. They'll start this one on their own 38-yard line. Drop off, set up a screen pass. Getting past the initial line, forging ahead and picking up six. On that play is Carter Bursall. I mentioned Bursall, 5'11", senior, 185. Last week in their 42 to nothing win over Northfield, it was 13 carries, 41 yards, and two TDs for Bursaw. Yeah, they're going to continue. They've, they've pulled the tight ends out, and they are going to continue to spread it out, which, you know, this is kind of a chameleon offense. They'll kind of go to whatever the Huskies want. Yep, it's an off-open set that they're going to now and pick up that time of seven and a first down again for Bursaw. 
So they go to that open set, and when they do, they bring in uh, a couple of different players at the wide out slots. And as you mentioned, Jim, take out the um, the tight ends as well. Rudd is now in, number 15, Johnny Rudd. O'Neill will get some reps also when they're in this open set. So we have not seen that first drive we saw McInich with a with seven runs. We haven't seen him run since. See if Adam, this is it. Adam Tim down below and will fake the handoff, take it himself. Not much there. Last weekend, McInich uh, picked up 279 yards passing and, and uh, collected two TDs along the way. As I mentioned last year, 13 touchdowns rushing. He's got just an overall portfolio. The Huskies, meanwhile, last year, we talked about the great defensive uh, Mankato West and over had 86 tackles for losses last season, 17 sacks and 14 picks already. Luke Denicky has one here tonight as he walked the ladder. Quick out that time, Staley trying to work Grease over on that far side. Picks up maybe just two yards. Staley last week, he had uh, seven catches, 130 yards, two touchdowns. He was their main go-to guy for McEnich. Actually, a pickup of seven on that second down play, so at least third and three, and you are certainly in four-down territory for the Scarlets. State champions in 2021. Lone receiver to the right. Wildcat set with H-backs in front, trying to power his way in. He gets near the first down marker and then pulled back by Andover. We'll see if they're going to give him the first down, but uh, a strong defensive effort, good tacking. And, and the one thing we are seeing, Jim, is, is really uh, the fact that they're finishing the plays and tackles. Yeah, they certainly are strong. There's a hold. <laughs> and they were able to set it, but Bubba Winkle came in there and drove him back. They're going to need it now. Fourth down. We'll see if he goes under center. He's not going under center. Again, it's a, that Wildcat from with McInich back there. Andover brings in some size also in the middle. Fourth in the yard. Snaps back. And he's got the first down. And he's taking it to the house. Touchdown. Mankato West as they saw something in terms of a good crevice on a previous couple of plays. And this time, he took it to the house. And a run that time of... Looks like it'll be 30, 37 yards. yards. Yep, 37 yards. And, you know, you're taking up also for Mankato West going off number 54. Go ahead, Jim. Yeah, that's Caden uh, Elwine, the guard, guard. But, you know, really, it, you're, you're selling out to try to stop him on all holes. And unfortunately, we just got through and nothing backing up. Snap, spot, kick is up and splits the upright. You know, what, what's great about the schedule this year for the fans and for us, Joe, is, is the fact that, uh, you know, we're seeing some of the state's best teams that we wouldn't necessarily see until the playoffs. What's tough for the coaches is they're going against a playoff opponent almost every week. And that's a great camera shot there. Yeah. Well done by the team on the field level. You could see on that gap there. I don't think he got touched coming no, he, through. No, he was, that was... That was execution, perfect execution on blocking. They saw the seam, and they took advantage of it there with the size and that strong offensive line. So for the first time tonight, the Scarlets have a seven-point lead, 21-14, 5.57 remaining here in this second quarter. And uh, it's the Huskies who will be returning this kickoff, moving right to left. and. You got to keep an eye on, uh, you know, Iafe because Iafe can just go to distance. He went 92 yeah. yards last week in the opening kickoff. Well, either, either Davenport or Iafe could, you know, Iafe over there he hasn't had either have a chance. There's no win tonight either. So if the, if the flagpole is uh, the flag is right against the flagpole, uh, just been fortunate enough to get the the ball out of the end zone. Chance now as they get set. Huskies, by the way, were up by a total of 45 to 17 at half last weekend. They're going to try to get some of that offense back. Finally, a chance to return this Iafe, but he probably wishes he hadn't. He took that. It was a really an impressive kickoff because yeah. you put it in that corner and you're not sure is it going to go through the end zone 
or uh, cut in front. And, and that also set up the coverage as well for Mankato West as they follow that ball to the corner. Very little time on that return. Pickup of about 12 on the return. Well, let's see if uh, if uh, Coach Develis decides to go downfield a little bit. You can see the safeties. They're cre creeping up to about seven yards. They're daring the Huskies to throw a downfield pass. And uh, we'll see right now if uh, if something is uh, changing in the offense. Maynard leads the team to the line. In motion, Bagali moving right to left. Quick back to Bagali. Bagali gets open, gets around the corner. Quick pass to him. This time they move him in motion and set up the blocker so it isn't nearly as dangerous as they anticipated. But uh, in terms of somebody picking it off, uh, Kovaroski with that tackle. He's several players just like Andover going both ways. And here comes Andover ready to go again. Two receivers to the right and left. Now in motion, Bagali. Handoff, Davenport tries to bang his way ahead. May have picked up two yards, but at least gets back on his way to the 25 for a short third and two. Yeah, the player down now for Andover. Uh, that's one of the linemen. I think that is, um, it looks like 76, uh, Holden Bieberg, the junior, only junior on the line right now. 6'3", 245, comes from a long lineage of uh, great athletes that have played for the Huskies. And, uh, so the, certainly been uh, keeping busy as a training team here tonight for the Huskies. As I mentioned, Pemberton uh, appears out for the game and a sling on his left, around his left elbow slash arm shoulder. I'll try to get more for you on that. and. That's had to kind of compromise a little bit, Jim, this offset spread high tempo offense as yeah. Uh, yeah. Pemberton with the arm. I mean, he, uh, he's the first to two drives through the receiver wide open. Here's another look at this injury. Yeah, just, yeah, he just got rolled up on. And so that's uh, coming in will be, I believe, Jamison uh, Kuznia, the junior. Number 58. Here we get set now for short. Third and two for Andover on their own. 30 yard, 25 yard line. Taking the snap meter, finds a gap and oh. just hit like a brick wall. My goodness. At That's the point of impact, he got no farther. Yeah, let's see. I, did he get it? I think he's going to be inches short. Uh, they're going to measure, but he is he's close. Good spot, actually, for the Huskies. We've got to, you know, the Huskies have a, an additional, looks like Calvin Stone is out as well. So they've got uh, Luke Hermberg Herm, out there. So two backups on the line. Well, we knew coming in, this Mankato West team is extremely physical. You know, with the, with the red and white, they... They almost look like Elk River. And it's a first down. First down, my goodness. Huskies! Nice job. Yeah, nice job by Maynard to be able to get stretched out. He has no fear. I mean, he's he's willing to get into it. Uh, and I think uh, limiting the time down is going to be uh, really important. Just a reminder at halftime, we're going to have uh, an interview with Susie Heller, who's part of the tackle cancer for Andover. Terrific. 4.30 remaining here in this first half. Andover three to the right. They're going to run to the left. A fine gap, and I'll tell you, he's starting to get some swag and cadence going here is Hudson Maynard. Picks up a nice, healthy, almost five on the play. Yeah, and six, they yes. Nice, very, very good run. Very definitive on, on how he's is running right now. Receivers again, three to the right. Offset. Throw underneath the Denicky. He's a horse. It's going to take a village to bring him down, and it does. A village of four after he picks up maybe two. I like that play. Just quite couldn't execute to get to that next day, but he was wrapped up by initially two of the Scarlet players, and two more came over to bring him down. 
Yeah, and, and Joe, you could see how close those safeties are playing. It is just, uh, as a coach, I know he's probably looking and saying, let's, let's try to air it out to someone. Yeah, they're all within about five yards. They move Begali in motion this time. Hang on and we get around the end for the first down. Strategic running, good job to read that situation. Looked in and bounced out. And uh, I tell you, Maynard is stepping up and, and playing some strong football here. It's not the same style as Pemberton, but they're doing a great job of controlling that line of scrimmage and he's picking his spots. Three to the right, one to the left. Fakes this, now deeps it up for Denicky. High points the ball and goes over the top of Staley to pick it up. Beautiful pass. High pointed at that time was Denicky. We've seen he's got some serious hops, and this one he pulls in for about a pickup of 22 on the play. Absolutely. What a great decision and a nice pass. You're going against Daly. Davenport tries to break the tackle from the line of scrimmage, but drags the tackler O'Connor with him for a couple more yards. And, uh, you know, they're getting that swag, and you can tell a little mojo, and, mm -hmm. and uh, mojo usually equates to confidence as they have a new quarterback leading them here. Mankato West. That's Mankato West getting half. tired yeah. and needs this time out. Yeah, really uh, excellent play calling and really excellent execution by uh, by Maynard right now. Uh, the one other thing, you know, two plays ago when they picked up that first down, uh, Davenport with a critical block on the edge to, to kind of break the containment of, uh, of West. And uh, West is on their heels right now. Maynard... Uh, great job of being the next man up and you know of course you got to give a call out to the coaches of course as they get the work on the depth because you never know in football your next time you're going to be out there is this next play and that's been the case starting with uh, Pemberton the quarterback who was injured and he had to be in pain uh, as he threw that second touchdown pass yeah. to Balagi or <laughs> yeah. Bagali in yeah. the end zone it, it was uh, yeah to be able to Put it, drop it like a dime. That's incredible. Hey, just want to give a shout out to uh, the Ashes out in Bismarck. Miss uh, Bob Ashes' mom, grandma. Thanks for tuning in. Second and seven for Andover. At the 30 yard line of the West, a quick fake on a jet sweep, holding on to it and maybe getting an extra yard. Boy, he is just. <laughs> He got two uh, yards on that. That's incredible. The way that he can avoid tackles and then keep his legs moving, it's, it's impressive. And that'll leave a third and five now for Andover, certainly in two-down territory with 2.20 to play here in this first half. Huskies have all of their timeouts left still. And Kato went west with only one. Crowded. Quads to the right. Quick pitch to the right side, trying to get outside and breaking the tackle now to the 10, to the 5, stopping and redirecting, reversing field, and there you get on display Davenport. But he is so quick and he is so elusive. His, his lateral movement is just incredible. You see right here, he looks like he has nothing. Quick pitch over there. Uh, Huskies all locked up, and Bengali's looking for somebody to block, and what a Outstanding run down to the five yard and pick up 24. First down, goal to go for Andover at the seven. Maynard really leading an impressive drive, but fakes this and is buried. O'Connor says, let me get you back up. <laughs> <laughs> We're ready to go. And a, he'll get a loss of two or maybe three now on the play because they took the snap from the seven. Yeah, glass and of three, yep. And take it second and goal to goal from the 10. I, nonetheless, I've been impressed with the drive that Maynard has left, has led. And it's really been kind of the opposite approach of what mm -hmm. you expect from Andover. But since Pemberton is out, they start to take on the personality yeah. here yeah. of Maynard. AFA in right now, a little bit bigger back. Moving to the right, looking for the pass, trying to get one-on-one -on -one coverage. Good touch, good pass, good touchdown, and in the house again. A beautiful pass. This time, Maynard to Iafe, and a touchdown for Andover. Oh, well, it's a wheel route coming out of the backfield. Linebackers late on getting there, and uh, actually had 
not bad coverage, but it was a better pass and an outstanding catch right in the back part of the end zone. Uh, Huskies come up and answer. Maynard right now, impressive, impressive, impressive. I love the play call. They really had been setting them up with a lot of passes, but that play call was perfect for that situation because they had one-on-one -on -one coverage on the Afe coming out of that backfield and that wheel route, you're right, was perfect. Snap, spot, kick is up and good. Continues, I shouldn't say it, perfect on this season is Eklund. And we are tied at 21-21. It's blackjack night in Andover on yeah, this Friday night. Denneke with a little bit of a, a, a pick right there and just an excellent pass, great catch. And there is a touchdown, third touchdown, wraps it up at 21 each with 110 left. They got the one-on-one -on -one coverage on Haddlestead, the junior. And I, you just got to <laughs> enjoy the the innovativeness of uh, this Huskies offense yeah. and, and really make it. You want to talk about uh, pivot. They're doing that today. Just next player up, next offensive set, and uh, a great job of play calling and you, execution. Yeah, you could see Maynard. Just the confidence in, uh, of his poise when he gets the ball. The first couple of uh, times, you, you know, you're, you're going against one of the state's best defenses and best teams, and uh, the the runs really helped out. Now, you can add that pass in there, and uh, the Huskies are on their way. Excellent on the kickoff, drops it to about the five, and a chance here for West. Move it north south. Breaking a couple of tackles, pursuing it, and bringing it up to about the 27-yard line. As Mankato West gets another look on this offensive set, and they have a buck three to execute before the end of this first half. Yeah, right now it's uh, no big plays. That's uh, That really needs to be kind of the call right now is no big plays. They've got five defensive backs in right now, uh, adding in um, uh, Wisen. Ski was Wininski, the uh, number 26. So they've got five defensive backs in to kind of take on this. Grease on the corner here, going against Staley. Bottom of the screen, handoff up the middle. Just one time out left for Mankato West. Or is that stand correct? Yeah, there's one time yep, out left for them. Yep. Pickup of two on the play, second and eight. Mackinick. Marks out to singles, looks down deep, has a receiver over the top, breaking up, nice job of stepping up. It was a bit behind the intended receiver and that time in uh, Kovaroski. But coming over from a safety standpoint, broke it up just enough. Yeah, nice job, and it was a cover three, so they've got all three, they've got three safeties back in the back and not allowing, and they just basically divide the field into thirds. Uh, as you can see right there, number 21, like you mentioned, uh, uh, the uh, Donnelly comes in for the uh, Huskies. Third and seven now for Mankato West. 38 seconds left here before the half. Timeout whistled here. That timeout with uh, timeout three seconds left Mankato on the playcock. That's the third and final timeout of the half. They were getting rushed, so it's just three ticks left on the play clock, they call their final timeout, and hey, right now Andover can dial up something defensively. Maybe Mankato West saw something as well that uh, they identified, and uh, the Huskies can hold them. Hey, they're not moving as fast as with Pemberton taking snaps, yeah. but I'll tell you what, this feels like a game that they're gonna kind of create uh, those opportunities. Certainly a person they missed out there is Teddy Heller. <laughs> Uh, the speed of Telly, Teddy, I enjoy watching his burst speeds, and uh, they certainly miss him out there uh, here this year and, and tonight, but uh, due to the fractured leg, he is out for the season that, it, that occurred during the scrimmage, and we're going to get a chance to speak with his mother here at half as we discuss uh, the Tackle Cancer Foundation. We're set now here, 37 seconds left before the half. The Scarlets come to the line, set with the offset slant. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. They bring out their open set offense, faking it, bringing it up the middle. They're going to take off and run. Mackinac here gets by the first, gets out of bounds at midfield. And uh, 30 seconds left there. Nice run, and that was obviously a, a set play there as they saw something develop. 
and uh, well, if running nothing, out of clock yeah, also. Yeah, so. if, nothing, if, if he got tackled, the Huskies would have to use a timeout. Uh, so it was uh, just uh, more of a time. And, and you, set, you see how deep the Huskies back three are. And uh, there's a reason why they're, they're doing that. Iafe comes over to join Smith, who's the wide out. And so deadly, he is heading to the University of Minnesota next year as a wide out. Quarterback draw once again. Rocks it up, breaks the tackle, continues it. What a strong runner. He continues, gets the first down and some extra bonus yards, the 12. And uh, with that, I couldn't tell if they marked him out of bounds and they're just not stopping the clock because of the first down. Yep, that's the case. So now they restart the clock under 20 to play. Intentionally grounding there by <laughs> Mackinick and <laughs> yep. half frustration. Yeah, cause you tried to get out of bounds, like you said. He was just frustrated with that. and uh, So it'll be second down, like you mentioned. The um, I, I I don't think we have seen the how far the, the kick. I didn't watch uh, the Mankato West kicker during uh, pregame. But right now it would be roughly a 55-yard field goal, which is uh, probably out of his range, I'm guessing. So they go three receivers to the left, one to the right, bottom of the screen. That's Smith. Look out, he's dangerous. Snap back, high it is, brought down. Mackinick flicks across the middle, has a receiver and completed at about the 18. They're going to need to scurry to get back. 11 seconds, and they're resetting for that first down after the pickup and the catch there by Kovaroski. They'll reset, start the clock, eight seconds back, and spiking it once again is Mackinick. Well, now it's a 40-yard field goal. You wonder if you, if if um, if they're going to try it or not. They've got, like you, you mentioned, 20. Uh, they've got nine seconds left. They probably have enough time for one one play and then maybe a boot. Nine seconds. He's done a pretty good job. Pretty proficient at stopping the clock or getting the plays off. Second and now 10 at the Husky 23-yard line. Snap, moving left. Mackinick wants to hit it. He's got the receiver out there. Kozarowski again. And uh, they're going to try it. It's going to be. Seeing Mackinick working the clock well, working like a KG veteran. Four seconds remain here in this first half. 21-21, blackjack night. 35-yard field goal, 36-yard field goal. And uh, run here. Yeah, yeah, and it's uh, uh, no, uh, it's Noah Fremreich. Kobarinski will be the holder. Meidel will be the long snapper. Fremreich ready. From 36 on the official number. Snap, spot, then the Huskies decide they're going to call a timeout. I know they're going to be a flag. Is it going to be offside? I think they might have run out of time. Prior to the snap, false start oh, no, on the right. offense. Number 18, five yards from the previous spot. Replay third down. Please reset the game clock to four seconds. Again, four seconds. We're talking about a 41-yard attempt after that the illegal procedure penalty on Mankato West. Movement there by number 18 on that far side, and that was Grady Hartlestead. And there's another one. They're going to move him back again. They may just throw a Hail Mary here at the end of the first yeah. half. Yeah. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense. Number 18, five-yard penalty, still third down. Brady Halstead. Yeah, he, did, he moved again, yep. yep. Halstead jumped. Janicki's been, been him over there, making him jump on these both both these teams not a good time to go into halftime after two false start penalties now a 46 yarder yeah now i'm intrigued a 46 yeah. yarder and we'll see if they had their quarterback back there i'd be a little concerned for a fake snap is low kick is up has the leg going distance and just off the mark i believe just short and little to the left. Good try. He could have made that from 41. Yeah. Moved back to 46 and a missed field goal from 46 years out. 46 yards out is how the Mikado West ends their last drive of the first half. And we are at the end of one complete.
of the, in terms of a half, it's 21-21. And over Huskies in Mankato West, coming your way here on QC TV. And uh, we'll return. Yeah, we'll return in just a moment for, this, for an interview with. An hour, please. One dollar. Have a good one. Got it. Hey, what's going on? Hey. Let me get an hour bar. Sure. One dollar. Appreciate you. Got it. mass shootings in U.S. history at Pulse nightclub in Orlando. Walking into the building for the first time after the shooting, it was crippling, but it had to be preserved. If you're an ally of this community, speak out. There are more of us together than apart. It is the power of love in its rawest form. Hey, welcome back to the uh, uh, Husky Stadium, 21-21 uh, at halftime right now. Un outstanding crowd tonight and a, a, an outstanding um, a charity giveaway to our uh, uh, collection tonight as uh, we have the Andover representative, Susie Heller, who is uh, the is taking care of you know really all of the uh, logistics around the uh, tackle cancer um, last year, uh, Susie eight thousand dollars that 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 the um, Huskies raised that the community raised this one uh, you know we start uh, on the first game and it's not over we've had no. a we've had a great uh, we've had a great uh, um, attendance tonight but tell us a little bit more about what's going on so. What we're doing is throughout the whole season, trying to do community events. Uh, different restaurants are hosting Dine and Donate. Um, we're having the Husky players out just for some fun and just to raise awareness. And in that, we're hoping to raise money as well. well that, that's great. And, uh, we've sold, I, I don't know, I have no idea how many shirts you've sold, but it's been more than five. Uh, it's, yes. uh, it's, it's, there's been a, a ton of, of shirts. I bought one, uh, and uh, we've got a, you've got a goal t that you guys are working on, correct, uh, with this. And uh, um, last year, 8,000. What's uh, Do we have a goal at all this year? More than 8,000? I'd like to top 8,000. Okay. Um, well. We've missed a few things. We were supposed to do the kickoff night, mm -hmm. and the heat kind of, Dampered yeah. that. Um, we've sold a ton of shirts tonight. They sold a ton during school, and so it's been just a great community <laughs> in event. So, and we this year we have not only pink, we have purple, we have orange, and we have yellow. So we're trying to you know, support all cancer. Yeah. And have a great fun neon out. If you can see the super fans, um, set colors for each of the grade levels, so you kind of see as they go up pink in the front, then yellow, then orange, and then purple in the back. Oh, that's great. That, that's the freshman back there. <laughs> <laughs> that's outstanding. So uh, on September 11th, you have something going on. What, what what do you have going on then? So September 11th at Applebee's all day long. If you go in and purchase dinner, meals, whatever, or even um, order online, 15% of the proceeds go to Andover Huskies and Tackle Cancer. So we have that event coming up, and then we also have at um, September 26th at 201 Tavern in o Anoka, same deal. They'll donate back to Tackle Cancer. Oh, great. So, uh, y you know, I is there a way that if you're not at the stadium tonight that you can kind of find out information more on the on the uh, uh, Tackle Cancer and, and the Husky Total Road? Yeah. Totally. We post on our community page, Andover community page, but Tom is really good at posting on the Andover Husky page, tweeting it out, getting all the information out to the team, and the team is also forwarding it on as well. So make sure you look at our community pages, our Husky football page, and everything will be out there. Well, great. Uh, Susie Heller, thank you so much for your volunteerism and, and your, your your attendance with this. And thanks for joining us on QCTV. Thank Half you. Yeah, about half time right now, we've got the Husky Marching Band, which is uh, outstanding. And we... Uh, um, I yeah, and we're gonna stay here, and we're gonna we're gonna s watch the uh, Husky marching band. Hey, score twenty one twenty one. We'll be back after. We'll be back at the end of halftime. Go Huskies. <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen, the Andover Huskies. Ladies and gentlemen, direct your attention to the North End Zone. Please welcome the Andover Bats team to the stadium. Give it up for the Pats! The Pats is hosted by Justin Peterson and Emily Moore. Texans are in reach for Lloyd and Abby Lozano. They'll be dancing tonight to the song, The Girls. Let's hear it for the Pats!
You're not gonna get it all right. Just make sure you nail the big stuff. Mama! Like making sure your kids are in the right seat for their age and size. Get it right at NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. QCTV is proud to announce award recognition for 2022. Including 10 Telly Awards. And two ACM Hometown Media Awards. QCTV is dedicated to providing high quality content for our community. We are grateful for the support and we look forward to another exciting year here at QCTV. On a Friday night, an outstanding evening, no mosquitoes, great temperature, <laughs> and some great high school football on display tonight. Joe ruling along with Jim Childs and Jim. It's been bam, pow, back at it. 14-14 uh, uh, at the end of the first quarter. Let's get a look at some of these plays. There's Jim running in yep. at the beginning. Need oxygen. Looking good. Pemberton. And Pemberton connects, throws Bagali. Bagali connects. Bagali had three catches for 103 yards in this first half. That's his first of two touchdown receptions that happened in the first quarter. And then uh, McInnes continues to drive it up, and he was busy. Continued, had some long runs, and he was certainly the maestro in this offense. He picked up a couple of touchdowns in the first half for Mankato West. And then uh, here's Pemberton just before. He is retired for the game. Throws open Bagali on the toe drag swag, his second reception of the game. And the Huskies were up 14-7. And then Mankato West came back. And here is the quarterback run. A big trap right up the middle. No one touched him. Going the distance about 60 or 40 yards on that carry. And then coming back late. And the Huskies counter as they bring in some swag and bring it in the Take over for Pemberton, and here's a little wheel route to oh, the Huskies. And uh, a big pick up by Afe as he picks up a touchdown reception from 10 out. That's his only reception of the game. And uh, for Afe, meanwhile, the Huskies tied it up there, 21-21 in half. Yeah, and uh, here's some stats on the uh, Mankato West side. Uh, the uh, um, McMackinich, uh, leading rusher, he's got he's got 11 carries, 94 yards, uh, one touchdown, uh, and then uh, also uh, the Homerinsky, four catches, 103 yards, uh, one for 56 yards and a touchdown. So those are the two leaders for uh, the Mankato West. Uh, and over, meanwhile, on the other side, it's three for three in terms of receptions for Bagali, 106, uh, 103 yards. Pemberton threw three for three and. Uh, also uh, for 106 yards and two touchdowns. He had three runs for 53 uh, yards, and it may have been that last run that ended his evening. Uh, in terms of running as well, Davenport, five receptions for 30 yards uh, and three receptions for 22 yards. Maynard, meanwhile, has come in, and he's six for eight, throwing the ball for a total of 58 yards. And he has run the ball as well, 10 carries and 29 yards so far and of course another catch on the night has come from Luke Denicky. he also has an interception defensively as we get just about ready to start this second half I've really enjoyed this game so far just the one turnover and that's the interception uh, for and over by Luke Denicky. yeah and uh, b both teams have played well and it's been you know both teams have kind of morphed into different uh, offenses and and trying to you know keep the other off balance uh, the Huskies, uh, you know, getting Maynard up to speed, they really ran him quite a bit, and then they kind of threw in some uh, some down-the-field passes that really helped out. And 
you know, really, Mankato West, I think Mankato West is, has really either they're running or they're throwing. Um, there's, uh, there's not a whole lot of difference between the two. Impressive out going right to left. Huskies will kick off, and the return here starts at the five. Quick burst speed, a gig gap spin move on the spin cycle there. Takes it to the 30, and a good return by the starting running back uh, this evening for the burst off. Yeah, he's had a couple of nice uh, uh, kickback returns. Getting us up to the 30. Yeah, that's uh, that's better than letting it go in the end zone. So it's going to be Mankato West getting there for possession here of the second half. They were driving, tried a field goal before the first half expired, but just missed on that 46-yard attempt. Would have made it from 41, yep. but they were penalized twice for illegal procedure. That moved them back. So here they come out. A chance here. Uh, receivers two to the left, two to the right. Quick pass off to the right. They quick try and they get Smith into the play, but that's the one thing they haven't been able to. Uh, and, and I applaud the defense of the Huskies as Smith who's headed to the University of Minnesota has, has you know been of minimal damage thus far yeah well that's that that's credit to OBAFA who has just I think this second half that will be the matchup we've got to look Kovaroski with that reception that's his fifth 11.45 and uh, they've got a new uh, the, a number eight uh, uh, Adam Tim in there as one of their Wide receivers, we haven't seen a lot of him in the first half. To the left side, punishing run. Offer there and the chance now. And Kovaroski again, getting the majority of touches. Did they say he was out of bounds or they gave him the first down? No, they did not. At an oh, he must have been out of bounds a lot earlier than what we thought, what it looked like on here. He's three yards short. McEnany here now gets him set. He is the own back back. Only there's an H back, and that means run. And he takes the run, gets by, and oh. barely gets there, but he's stuck on that far side. Coming up, McEnany with that power run, but boy, he took a jolt. In fact, comes back to the sideline and gets set again. Yeah, Winkle. Oh. Bubba Weichel with another good tackle over there on that side he's a big you know Magnus is a good runner and he, he is a load to bring down they shift it back and now you kind of see him going back we had talked to the coaches at pregame and they said they go to this open set and that's when they'll bring in those four receivers and kind of box them out wide as a result they take it up a notch running wise and some quick pass out so that's to Staley most of the night it's been uh, McIntyre Grease shadowing Staley. Staley's a six foot three receiver. And down here the near side is Smith. And as you mentioned, Jim, it's Tim as well. The two down low. Lone back just off to the set on the pistol. Looking to pass. McIntyre drops it over the top and dips it just in front. And Grease levels that time uh, the receiver. And I believe That's that was Kovarinsky again. Kovarinsky again. It's kind of his go to. Well, you know, this is as good as a run. It's it's a three-yard run, and now it's third down and one. And uh, uh, this is uh, we'll see if they if they bring in that uh, kind of uh, wildcat look, which they are. They drop back, and we said they go through an empty backfield, but with the H backs up to block power move here, first down and more. In fact, it was getting close to where he. Broke open that long run, Mackinich, to give Mankato West that first lead in that second quarter. But he does get the first down, picks up just enough, and they'll set the ball down on the 46-yard line of Andover. This is what we saw in that first uh, in the first drive. It's really just very methodical. Now they're bringing in uh, all wide receivers, and uh, they're going to spread it out. So the Huskies will have to be. On their toes for another some of, another one of those short passes. This time they leave a wing back in on that far side, just off the hip of the tackle, and a handoff forged the head burst off. We'll get a couple of yards, but uh, he's earned every yard tonight. He has been there has been contact uh, at the line of scrimmage almost every time that Bursa has touched the ball. This one no different. 
And if just, you're fragile <laughs> like me, that would be a punishing night. You're right. He really hasn't had anything more than five yards, but he's his kickoffs have been impressive, but uh, taking a punish. So now just a lone receiver off to the left, wing back just off the flank of the tight end, handoff up again. This one going to Bursaw again, pounds, grounds his way ahead for another two yards, and that's going to leave a third and about five here for the Scarlets. Yeah, it's uh, to see where do they go next. They, they're, they're not bringing in the big package. So it uh, this is most likely you've just got to contain Mackinich to make sure he doesn't get outside the pocket and take off. J.J. Helgett, the head coach for this Mankato West team, which won the state tournament in 2021. Handoff, he'll take it around the corner. Will he get there? Stood up and put down, and I think he will be just short of the first down. What a collision. Yeah, and he's hurt. Mackinich is down, and so is Winkle. Both sevens uh, collided there, and it was seven heaven, it looks like. Oh, yeah, that both, is. Uh, both are down. Mackinich. You can see right Take here, Mackinich. Here yeah. comes Weichel. Right off. And he lined him up. And punishing blow. Pun Weichel, not up yet. Mackinich is. I'm sure he's got the wind knocked out of him. Both of them probably have. Weichel now up. He's going to come off, I'm sure, for one play. Here's the, here's the replay again, Joe. 2021. Is, uh, he just gets through containment, and Weichel just stands him right up. Ifl over there for the assist. So it'll be a fourth down and two. Major collisions. <laughs> wow. A lot of players shaken up, offensive linemen. Of course, yeah. the Huskies lost their starting quarterback, Pemberton, in that first quarter, near the end anyway. I think we've got a, uh, a different Wildcat in there. That's number 27. Uh, that's Trevor uh, Shellup. Shellrup. Then they have two receivers flanked off the tight end, and then the wide receivers split to both ends. I see it's Koborinski. Well, hold on, take it on the ground. I think he may have just gotten it with a second effort, or maybe they're no, going to short. He's going to be a he's going to be a yard short. That's going to be Husky ball. What a stand! Good job. It is. It's it's a turnover on downs. Good job. Nice stop on the fourth down, and the D comes up big. And I, I will tell you, this has been just an outstanding matchup to call, uh, and, and and watching the amount of physicality going on in that front line, Jim, and yeah. the blocking schemes. They try to shift off. You can see some slants coming in, but I, as a whole, it's just. Both teams boy, are earning <laughs> that sweat equity out here tonight. So yeah. back out again, and keep in mind for the Huskies now, they are on the backup quarterback, Maynard. And he's looked good. Maynard drops back, now finds a gap, tries a burst for a speed, but that's going to be considered probably a sack as he's dropped for about a yard loss. Yeah, he had he had one read, and that was to Davenport, who was, uh, was on that wheel route. Um, and really, the uh, the the near side receivers didn't move they were kind of there so i wonder if there was some kind of miscommunication there quads to the bottom of the screen here on the left maynard joining here quick pass almost behind picking it up davenport burst of speed down the sideline he had to turn around when he got the reception still a burst of speed picked him up but well now four total of five but only second and six as they lost the yard and there's a player now down what looks up here cramps yeah, we're pretty early in the uh, second half um, i'm sure this is not going to be the last time we see cramps that's uh number 12. yep that's o'connell he's able to get and through Dav uh, yeah davenport nice job getting through so it's third down and six. That's a big body out of there defensively at six foot three, 190. And O'Connor, and now they're going to bring it back. The officials are like, we're starting the clock here, fellas. Play clock is going, plenty of time, but tempo. Tempo and speed is the key here for the Huskies. They like to set that cadence. 
And Maynard now leads him to the line with three receivers to the far left. This is a handoff, a chance, cut back. Good move here. And trying to continue and keep those legs moving, even though he has a defender draped on his ankle. Davenport picks up three, and he'll be a yard short. Well, yeah, it, uh, actually, he'll be two yards short. We'll have to see what uh, looks like they're going to punt. Danicky will be back. Good news for the Huskies. All five of these starting linemen were back in. I know we had a couple that uh, had, had uh, fallen to the wayside in the first half, but all five of the Husky linemen were back in. Thanks for that update, Jim. I was just going to ask as I looked across to see the strategy here. Still nine seconds left before they snap. And back again to take this punt is Danicky. And we have what? Uh, it's going to be a delay of game, I believe. I don't think they got it off in time um, or an illegal procedure. But the play, play clock was at zero. Sometimes you want to get to that line in time. Maybe you do a quick Prior to the snap, hard count first. Full start on the offense, number 59, five yard penalty, replay fourth down. See a good view here from yeah, the they field. Got, and yeah, they got it off. They got the thing off. Yep. Good shot by the crew there. Nice job, guys. He punted it at zero, but uh, <laughs> he got the snap before that. Yep. So we'll get a look here. Uh, set on another punt. This one. Wind over N. Catching it there for the fair catch is Hale Staley. And now we'll get a look and see if the starting quarterback is going to make his bacon for uh, Mankato West. Uh, he's out there. He's coming back in. He just, so, he oh. looks like just a sturdy, yeah. sturdy, strong individual that uh, yeah. it's going to take a lot to to knock him out. And but number, both sevens are back in. Weichel back in as well. Knew you weren't going to keep him out. Back in it. Same formation, just a little offset on that left to the pistol formation. Nice bottle up that time. Quarterback that time was, uh, you know, Makinich just seemed like a little start and stop. Wasn't a little bit unsure the first time you've seen him yeah, that unsure. He, he's not healthy right now. He 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 made he made, missed the cut on that, but watch him get up. He's just he's a little slow on getting up. And uh, not uh, he doesn't have his uh, his legs under him like he did in the first half. Set now, pistol, single set, back to the left. Quick pitch, left side. Bursaw will try to bust something through. He, in the midst of another collision, and all of these players, I think, will be stiff for the next week <laughs> before the next game. Yeah. And uh, good tackling there. But you're also seeing what we said was kind of one of those X factors to start the game is finishing plays and tackling well for Andover because they watched game film and noticed the opponent for Mankato West nice. missed several tackles and that gave, that gave up some big plays. Already just six minutes left in this third quarter as this thing is moving fast, a lot more running than we typically see for the Huskies game. It's turned to the right, looking right, trying to find it deflected, nicely done. Deflecting it, knew he, was, he knew he was not going to be able to get back to the quarterback, Mackinac, that time, and he just put his hand up to knock it down defensively, number 43. Yeah, Bailey, Bailey Taylor, outstanding play. Outstanding series right now. The, the Huskies have come out, and they are uh, controlling that line of scrimmage. They're just not, uh, you know, the, they're just not able to get past, the, uh, past them. They probably have to go back to some of the short passes. Working the clock down here, still nine seconds left. Before the punt. Almost a chance trying to lay out to get the block, just missing. Oh. High in the air, gets a generous bounce. This thing is going to be stopped at about the two yard line. Whoa, that is going to be a 63 yard punt. A stopped at the one, so a 62 yard punt. Getting the bounce and uh, Back on that return, uh, just not quite in position with Davenport to get to it. Yeah, Davenport needs to make sure he, he at least gets a fair catch. That's a, That flips the field by almost 20, 25 yards. So the Huskies need to come out here and, uh, you know, get 
get out of the shadow, if there was a shadow, of their own goal post. We'll start it here. Check the formations. We're going to go three receivers, trips to the left. Davenport lines up in this offset spread tempo offense for the Huskies. Hand off to Davenport. Had a yard or two, almost a face mask there. So he wanted to bounce out to get more, and I think uh, maybe he got a yard on the play with that. Uh, it doesn't look like he got anything. So nice time for 98 yard pass. A quick uh, play action and yeah. see if they can hit uh, Bengali out here on the uh, left side. I wouldn't mind either the wheel route once again if they can get the time. A one on one matchup here to the near side. Yeah, they just to the left in this offset. Spread offense, looking back down the middle, has the seam over, throws the receiver, and now it's picked off. Brought back again, trying to break a tackle, and boy, he, that wasn't a bad pass at all. Johnny Fry got an arm up, but unfortunately, it was a pick off that time by number 17 on the play. That was a post route. That actually just, uh, he was just, it was right behind him. And Fry just couldn't couldn't grab it. Nice uh, nice catch actually by Ben O'Neill, the sophomore. Boy, you just want to get a hand on it, deflected or something on that piece to not allow that easy turnover. Well, second, that's the second turnover of the game. The first here for Andover with 4.55 to go before the end of this third quarter. At the 20 yard line on the turnover, let's see if they can cash it in. Quick pass over the middle, completed to who else? And going to the yard and to the house on one play. Going the distance is Kovaroski. Yeah, Kovaroski. Wow. Well, that play by Makinich is uh, he had to tiptoe around and a quick release to, to uh, Kovaroski, who's been sensational in the second half right now. So. Yeah, they may need to look and double up on him or you hate to yeah. take that coverage off of uh, Riley Smith as well. But uh, I will tell you, Kovaroski's just, he has that instinct, finds the gap, and he'll do well yeah, he just at sat, Augustana. Yeah, he just sat down in that uh, in the zone right there and waited for that. And uh, kick is up and good. Kovaroski that time with the set place on that kick, kick and extra yeah, point is good. Second lead of the game now for Mankato West. He just kind of stepped in there wide open and he was sitting kind of in that soft zone where the where we've seen a couple of uh, nice passes right where the, the the linebacker vacates either to rush the quarterback and uh, that time good job by uh, taking Mankato a look West. also at the standings uh, break in here and these are the North Star West Gold and over Cambridge Ice Anthony 1 0. Elk River took a loss, and they might have an interesting season, Jim. Sock Rapids Rice 1 0, and then Frank St. Francis 0 1 because uh, they're starting all over with uh, with their offense. Yeah. Uh, and that's a wing T formation. And yeah. uh, they went through three quarterbacks last weekend. We'll see. I, I haven't heard uh, tonight where they're at, but uh, it's, uh, you know, that, that is such a intricate offense that you have to be very very good at uh, staying on track a lot of juice happening tonight here at andover you can see wide range of fans and there you get a look at the training table and then the defensive uh, coach also white over there kind of getting his troops together that time it was rare they missed the tackle and they haven't done much of that all night jim and that time it cost them. Not in the second half, especially. You know, there's been two two drives and uh, out. This kick looks like almost out, and he'll pick it up right on that far line. And Iafe, is that who it is? I think it is Iafe who powered his way ahead. Iafe was getting up a little bit gimpy, but I tell you, you, you got to hand it to the coaching for Mankato West because. They have not allowed the Huskies to breathe on the kickoffs. That's not easy to do for a high school team. Well, here's the other piece. You turn it over, the interception, and the rule is always go to the end zone because teams are many times not as organized yep. getting back out there. It wasn't a throw to the end zone. And kudos to that defensive line. They had, uh, you know, 
Makinich on the run, and he just chipped a, about a five-yard pass to Kovareski, who took it to the house from there. Handoff this time back to Davenport, trying to cut back, and they have pretty much had him sealed run off the on the night. Back that half, he just had five rushes for 30 yards. Yeah, that one, no gain again. He's uh, He's been bottled up on that line of scrimmage. We're going to have to think of something different. Here. And we've got another injured uh, uh, Scarlet right now. And that's the 87. That's one of their their, their top uh, linemen, Denim uh, Blackstead. He's out. Four minutes, 11 seconds. They'll restart the clock. Players off on the side. And now we have a second and nine for the Huskies. Jumping offside. Reset. And that was Fry. Prior to the snap, snap. Full, full start, start. On, the on the offense. offense. Number, Number six, six. five yard five penalty, penalty. Still, still second, second down. down. And let's see what they can do to get that confidence brewing again yeah. here for the backup quarterback, Hudson Maynard. Uh, so, yeah, Davenport even moved too. So, yeah, it, it was. Uh, Cadence issue there. Drop back kind of an inside screen ahead, getting it to Bagala. His first touch in a while. Breaks a couple of tackles and tries to break a third. He'll Hudson take it to about the 22 yard line and that'll lead Bagali. third in about seven. And I would agree, there's a key piece. You got to get that ball in his hand and there's Tackle a cramp 12, on Bagali as well. Yeah, just about <laughs> every play they're having. It's a, it's a timeout. We may get done about 11 o'clock tonight. <laughs> um. I'll tell you, that was a first, a fast first half. And plus with the halftime, I'm looking back up yeah. and going, hey, it's 8.15, 8.20. That was, that was a fast first half, considering yeah. it was about a 25-minute halftime. Yeah, what a great ahead. performance by the, uh, the band and the dance team at halftime. I'm glad that we were able to cover that. That was outstanding. The band sounds great, and I just, I pull my hamstring every time I watch <laughs> the dance team, just the way they can, flexibility and all of that. Yep. Probably yell Black Hawk down if I were out there. So we are set now for a third and six. Ball at the 22-yard line of Andover. Critical That's, that they get this first down. Yeah, look for Denneke here on the far side. He's one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, it's going deep, throwing deep, airing deep, and just missing. Just not quite enough air under it that time intended for Denneke. Good call, Jim, as they had one-on-one -on -one coverage on that side, but uh, just not quite enough height to allow him to run under it and use that height as a difference maker. So that leaves fourth and six for Andover. They'll punt with 316 remaining here in this third. Oh, hot end over end, but they'll get a bounce, a high bounce, a chance for Staley to return. Good coverage. He could maybe get a yard after that return. An end over end punt. That looked like a, the punch you get on a quick punch. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, quick yeah kind of that, right, that rugby tie style. Um, good field possession for Mankato West. Not quite the field position they had last time, but uh, it, it, uh, you can see right there, defensive coordinator, Coach Weichel, giving some direction to the middle linebacker, Bubba Weichel. Yes, relations. Here they come, Mankato West, looking to extend their seven point lead, a handoff up the middle, and boy, <laughs> there's a dog fight going on in the trenches. Great tackle, and Bursaw again had nowhere to go, and you could see some of the blocking continuing down the field as we're under three to play in this third quarter. Yeah, we heard, uh, you, we could hear that hit up here. I mean, these, uh, this is uh, about as physical a game as I've seen the Huskies in. Uh, since they've played Elk River. From their own 45, Mankato West. Huskies almost jump. McInnich barking to singles, looks for the quick out. Now rolls to his right, tries to extend the play. Holding will be the call, and he's pulled down on the sack. Nice a big-time sack by Luke Beck. 
Beck has had a great game so far right now. He missed, he missed that interception in the first, but that one he didn't miss. He, uh, he was able to get it. We'll find out what the flag is. Hopefully it's not a hold against the Huskies. It's a hold against West. Mankato West, they'll decline that and will set up third in about 17. Great effort. Beck came out of nowhere. Holding Shot out of the game. On the, the camera. offense, number 52. That penalty was, will be declined. Third down. He pinned those ears back, and I'll tell you, I, I enjoyed watching that. It was almost like it seemed like a delayed blitz of some sort, but he really wanted to do the quick out to the left. The Huskies just had it covered. It was a, it was a zone, and they, they just had had everybody covered up. Great job by the Husky secondary. Third and 16. Mankato West, two to the left, two to the right, looking deep, and he almost gets a sack. Oh, We're going to get a holding, and there's a hard pop at the end of the play. We're going to get a physical, uh, probably a 15-yard. Well, they'll probably offset. They will. Um, but that was a pop yeah. that they put on Mackinich at the end. Yeah. And ben, ben Peterson laid some, laid some wood down to... I'll see you. And there was definitely a hold that took place on the Andover defender as they almost had Mackinac again for a second consecutive time. You got to like how the defense is really tightening the screws and coming back. Uh, well, they've gone to the zone because they, 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 they're they watching the quarterback in the back and they're just able to, as he moves out, they're able to, you know, quarter him on one side of the field. So there's three flags on the there's field. There's two penalties on the play, one on each team. We've got a hold on the offense, number 57. We got a personal foul, unnecessary roughness on number eight on the defense. That penalty will uh, will offset, replay third down. Well, they'll redo third and 16. This has not been uh, a very good possession here for the quarterback, Mackinich, as he's taken some shots in two of the three plays. Right. We now got they're going to call a timeout here. Oh, no. wonder if it's play clock or spot of the ball. I don't know what the, what the spots in the ball's in the right spot. Now, uh, whatever it is, it's behind us. And now we're set for this critical third and 16, just under two to play here in the third quarter. Mankato West across the middle, finds an opening. They need to put him down right there. As oh. He's so elusive. It takes three of the Husky players to triangulate down the that wide receiver. Oberinski is a weapon, and that throw from Mackinich was beautiful. That was right on the money. Another Husky down with a, with a cramp. Mackinich, your uh, right head, some poise to stay in the pocket after taking a couple of shots the last two snaps. But he... Uh, I mean, you've got to have that radar set <laughs> and get somebody else the ball other than, yeah, and you're looking there, it's good toss, but even when he catches the ball, he finds a way to extend the play. Now, this is an important play, Joe. They've got, uh, it's fourth down and uh, uh, a full two, and uh, Beck's Beck will come off. Let's see uh, if uh, the offense is coming back on. So this is uh, fourth and two. Kovaroski, just a knack for that ball. And then yeah. just a knack to be able to get yak. That time he got very little yak. The Huskies can stop him here. They're, they're, that'll flip the field. Good opportunity for the Huskies to turn this game around right Power now. Power formation here with the H-backs. Powered again, right up the middle, taking it to the 20, to the 10. They saw that gap again and taking it to the house. Is the Andover Mankato West QB one more time? Mackinich takes that one to the house from 47 yards out, I believe. It. Yeah, right in the same spot, right in between. It was a dive right in between the, the Garden of Tackle. And you yeah. know they got back and said, "Where? Let's run that again. We had success with it, and now they've extended their lead to two touchdowns. If they can make this extra point." And uh, Mackinich looks about exhausted right now as he goes to the sideline. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, 
put a burst of speed and then kind of drag the defender on into the end zone with him. Look at this, exact same location yep. and not touched. They're swatted at, but that was it. It's Couldn't just, get anything more on them. Yeah, that was just a, a uh, offensive uh, line massacre. And they just uh, they were just able to just run it right where they wanted to do it. Iafe that time trying to strip the ball along with another defender before he made it to the end zone. Makinich. Well, uh, over to the bench for a little Gatorade, which is well deserved. Yeah, so Huskies uh, with a minute 30 left in the third period uh, need to need to find some answers right now on, on moving the ball. Maynard, they're going to have to throw downfield. Yafe having a conversation. He's coming off the field here. Got some cramping issues. And they get ready now for the extra point. Snap the spot, the kit is perched up and through, and the, the that right. kick is good. It is good. I thought you, I heard a couple extra whistles, yeah. and maybe it was called dead. So, 130 remaining here in this third. It was tied up, Jim. 21 21 with about five minutes to go, and then the Huskies buried deep in their own end. Throw the interception one play later, the strike. For the touchdown pass That's to it. who other than, Rinsky, yep. yes he's been everywhere but i'll tell you it's, it's a couple of long runs as well the yardage starting to tag up here as well for makinich on the night as well he said two runs that i mean the blocking scheme perfect he wasn't touched the last time he was probably touched by an arm trying to fling out and just get a piece of makinich well, on the, execution. In, yeah, in that formation, they've scored a uh, touchdown on 37 yards by Magnus, and that one was 47, so or 46. So there's been uh, uh, absolutely a um, a hole right there on that that wild kite cat type formation. So down by 14, 35, 21, the Huskies. Without the services of the starting quarterback Pemberton, who had. Three passes for 106 yards and two touchdowns all in the first quarter. He's knocked out of this game with maybe an, uh, we'll see shoulder or elbow. It's all just speculation. Picked up just inside the goal line and Bagali tried to walk the line that time without his foot touching. Okay, so how, how does that work where the referee starts winding the clock and then calls a uh, touchback? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, multitasking, maybe, uh, but not necessarily correct. <laughs> trying to look around at some of the scores. Of course, I'm always. My nephew texts me, says they're up 33 to 6 at half. Dassel Cocado taking on the Holy Angels team, where they have that trifecta of coaches. A different set for the Huskies. Different formations here. Quick pitch to the outside, trying to get coverage and blockage to. Allow one of their speedy backs, this time Davenport, Davenport to get the rush. edge, but by well defended that time Stab. by Mankato West of Scarlet. Are hitting that next gear here as we're under a minute to play in the third. You know, I, you know, with the exception of that one run at the end of the first half, Davenport's been pretty locked up, which is surprising because he usually he's good for a couple of bursts. Back is Maynard, splits the seam, tries to move out of the pocket, and he's brought down for the sack. Hudson Maynard sacked by number 54, Camden Elway. Speed and size right now looks like it's taken a toll on the Huskies as Maynard had a, a pretty good second quarter as he came in and a good start to the third, but uh, so far kind of that hit the switch moment has, has been that interception and next play. Mankato West cashing it in, and then the second long run of the game from Akinvich. Rolling to the right, trying to get some time, and now throwing it deep, has a receiver. Pick Garen Goddard, went through the hands of the defender. And 
identity is Houdini down there as he pickpocket the cornerback. And I agree, good ball that time by Maynard just to yeah. get the ball up and let your big receiver do something with it. And that play yeah. will take us to the end of the third. Yeah, Denicky right here. He rolls out to the right. Denicky had a couple of steps. It's a little underthrown, but uh, great throw. And how he caught that, I don't know. But uh, the Huskies will take it. Uh, good momentum going into the fourth. We are at the end of three complete. It's 35-21. The Mankato West Scarlets over the Huskies. Fourth coming your way in just a moment. You're not gonna get it all right. Just make sure you nail the big stuff, like making sure your kids are in the right seat for their age and size. Get it right at NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. If you're buzzed and doing this, to make yourself feel okay to drive, Welcome back, Joe. Rooming along with the Jim Childs as we bring you Andover football please on this Friday on night. The clock. Twelve minutes, please. <laughs> they started the clock a little early, and now they'll reset and we'll get the snap here. I think that's John Heath. John Heath missed that one. Heath, it is. Looking to pitch? No, he'll hold on to it. Do a little spin cycle move to try to get some progress, but. That is stamped out. Is that a fumble? No, he, they say he was Run down. He was down. Just as he spun for the ball, they punched it out, but they'll call it down, and so second and ten. So let's see what they can draw up from a land of creativity to try to get their quarterback a little time. Maynard and down the field. Quick pass here, near side. Moving left, going right. Here's Davenport, moving it ahead. A spurt ahead, a big time gain of 14 on the play, and that'll give the Huskies a first down on the 28-yard line of, excuse me, the 30, 33-yard line of uh, of Mankato West, and, and, and nice job there by the Huskies, the offensive lineman to help stretch the cramp yeah, yeah. out of the. Well, this is almost hindering the the, the heat and the in the cramps are almost hindering the the tempo that uh, Coach Devellis likes for the Huskies where you've got to stop almost every play for a player. Talking with the trainer, Lisa, ahead of time for the Huskies, and they said they have a magic elixir that nobody likes the taste of. And uh, it's going to cram it down some throats. And maybe the IV. <laughs> Might be. Here we go. First down for the Huskies on the move. Looks like they got a little mojo flow going, oh. and then they almost turn it over. Trying to move, take a step back was the quarterback there in Hudson Maynard. And when he moved back, the snap was a little low, not that bad, but off to a side. And then he was knocked off the ball by Davenport. And yeah. Davenport said, I better get that fumble back. Yeah, nice job by Davenport to jump on that. That would have uh, been uh, one of those momentum killers late in this game. Second and 14, loss of four on the play. Huskies moved back. Now look across. Maynard wants to air this out, has a receiver, but goes to the left, and the receiver, Denicky was looking to his right, had the receiver open. And Maynard that time was also backpedaling while he was throwing that deep ball. He'll learn at a point to step into those. Yeah. So that was, the, I don't know if that was a fade or it was supposed to be a post. Um, but uh, yeah, the, uh, just uh, either a wrong route or a wrong throw. I just see, hey, with, with that height and the athleticism of Denicky, get that ball somehow up in the air for him. There's a good screen here that Bagali Bagali moves ahead, but just to the initial line of scrimmage, and this will be fourth down and 10 for Andover with 10 20 to go and another stoppage of play. I think that's Bengali. It's still down. So, uh, and a fourth down and 12. We got to wonder what um, 
Coon Rapids Osseo going on here. Thanks, Ryan, in the truck doing a good job here. It's 1915. You get a look at CTN Sports. Coon Rapids, of course. Boy, they've come good. back the last couple of years. They have. They have. They got a spark on that offense in the backfield and also at the wideout. You see Osseo giving a run here as well. They are at about eight and a half to play in the fourth. Good to get that video from CTN. Thank you very much. Some substitutions and actions happen and get a look at head coach there for Osseo. And of course, Colorado buffs. I'll talk about it after this. <laughs> I thought he was making a call. No, he was not. What a, what a game by the Colorado buffs last weekend. Of course, I've had a chance to see several games out there, but uh, <laughs> just goes to show you with the portal. You can turn a team around in, yeah, in a short can. amount of time. Well, you know, and I think you can. I think he, they've got a pretty inspiring coach. Um. So they have now third, fourth, and twelve as handover. They line up with two receivers to the right. Denicky looking back to the uh, coaches for their singles. Look at that. Two receivers to the far side, and in motion chance here that was Audette in motion pulling up trying to make it and on the run but not going to make it good intentions good burst picked up seven maybe six and he was short of that first down so I'll turn it over back to Mankato West here with just under 10 to play in this fourth quarter 953 remaining yeah nice. urgency is now for the Huskies they'll gonna have to take some chances on uh Making sure that uh, if they can strip the ball, if they can get a three and out, this is uh, the time to do it. Once you get a look at uh, McInnes getting ready to take another step, two receivers to the left, one in the slot. In that flanker spot just to next to the tight end, a handoff. And uh, boy, you know, just taking a beating has been Carter Bursoff. There's just one player who. <laughs> I mean, he's had success. He moves the ball ahead. It's just a punishing night of running for him. Meanwhile, his teammates have certainly picked up some uh, some big plays. Mankato West in no rush to move this along. As Will approach the nine-minute mark at this stamp, and we have second and six for the Scarlets. Hand off again to Bursaw and Huskies are doing everything they can. First, get the tackle, the second, trying to punch that thing free. Yeah, it, uh, so it sets up a three, a third and six. Um, you, you know, do you run it again? Do you pass it? The Huskies have really done a nice job with the exception of a couple of slants that shut down this passing game for uh, Mankato West. It's uh, the running of Mackinich that has been really the difference maker. Just consistent. Gosh, when he runs that, I mean, he threw his first interception of his career tonight to Denicky. And had up ahead, oh. stopped right there. Stonewall, good stop there. Let's see if that can catapult the Huskies here and get them some momentum. Right down by number seven, Kim. As we approach eight number minutes 15, to go, Luke and back. it's a rare punt tonight. Now, Weichel, again, Bubba Weichel has had a, a half. Look at him, Phil, right there. Stopped in his tracks was Burchard. Chance here, and a look on this punt return. Fair catching over this time. <laughs> Last time didn't get that fair catch and took it down to a 62-yard punt and the ball at the one, which eventually resulted in that turnover for Andover. Their only turnover, both of these teams, one turnover tonight. And overall penalties, even penalties at half. Uh, yeah, Big Key was uh, three for 20, what was it? Uh, one for 10 for the Huskies at half. It, it's been a very clean game, Joe. You're absolutely right. It's 
And third down has been kind of the thing that the trended last year. The Huskies were 43% on third down conversions. Uh, and that's a pretty impressive number. In their first game, we'll get to that in a minute. Dropping the ball, picking it back up, and this time brought down by an entourage of Scarlet. There was Maynard. Last week, Andover, as you get another look at this play, just couldn't handle maybe some trying, trying to do too much. Andover on third down conversions last week was uh, 10 of 11. Tonight, not so much. Of course, you say that was adequate, Joe, last week? <laughs> <laughs> Adequacity. And uh, first downs last week, they were 21. They had 21. The opponent, St. Mike, or excuse me, St. Uh, Thomas Academy had 12. Watch Quick out. Here's a chance. Getting low. Breaking a couple of tackles, but not able to break the third and brought down after that catch was Anthony Mitchell, Michelli, excuse me. Michelli is fast, boy. He had a, 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 a one call back last week, but he is quick as you would say a hiccup. I'll look here and see what they can get for a set or some mismatches. Third in 12 here for Andover. Quickly rushed, not even a chance. They shot the gaps. And uh, Maynard just got that ball in his hands, was going to take a step back to take and survey the field, but he didn't have time to do that. No, no Elwine just blew up the line. Is he right there? Number 54. He's right there, gets past the guard, and, you know, actually there was two that made him to the quarterback. So, so Maynard, Maynard's done a great job since coming in after the injury to Pemberton. Everton uh, finished up that first quarter. And there's a friendly hop. It must be that type of the, the grass, particularly on that side of the field. And another injury down for Jeremy the Huskies here. And uh, that looks like that Michael. Donnelly gets that. Uh, yeah, Michael. Touches that ball, sets it down. So we get now five minutes, 50 seconds remaining. Why go back down again? There was an interesting uh, comment that one of the coaches from Mankato West made while we were down there. He said, you know, you, you don't have the, the change in schedule. You don't have the opportunity to get your young players in as you have been in the past with, um, uh, you know, getting, you know, getting that, you know, a big halftime lead and then being able to play some of the second and third stringers. We'll see, we Huskies and uh, the uh, the Huskies and uh, Mankato West were able to do that last week. Not tonight. This is uh, this is going to be uh, number ones all the way through. Huskies will take on uh, Cambridge Isani next week up in Cambridge Isani. 35-21 lead here for the team in white, the Scarlets from Mankato West. Just one loss last season, Jim, and that in the state championship game against Elk River, pounding and just moving the pile. Yeah, as Bursaw. Bursaw has been, uh, you know, you, you talked about you know, yards after contact. He, he, but basically, his resume tonight is yards after contact. With the exception of the kickoffs. He's, he's had great. about, yeah. I would say, up to about 15 carries yeah. on tonight. I don't think he's at 50 yards. And, but he, he had 20 at the end of the first half. I don't think we've, uh, he might be at 35. Snap comes, quick throw, off the mark. Or was that caught? No, it was off the mark. I thought it went beyond Staley that time as they quick tried to get a quick out just to try to keep him honest. But that stops the clock with 5.05. So Jalen Smith has been a non-factor. AFA has completely taken him out of the game. Weichel comes back in. As Coach Weichel had to be reminded of the official, you're not a player, you're a coach, so get back to the sideline. Third and seven here. See if the Huskies can make their second consecutive stop. Just trying to continue and advance the ball, pushing it ahead, but it'll be short of the first down. McInnish on the McInnish run. on the carry. But he looked Stop like he was down. I wonder if we can get a replay of that. He, 
number I don't know if he landed on one of the Huskies. It'll bring up a fourth and three for Mankato. Maybe they try a quick punt here, but line up yeah. in a position here, or they may feel like right now, man, we've. This is it. We can uh, go back to uh, power H back formation. I think you're going to punt. Well, they may run it down and call a timeout. They will. That's what they're going to do. They still may run it. Timeout. Mankato West. First to the half. Well, it's been a great turnout tonight, a great atmosphere, some definitely some energy and some juice in the air on uh, such a, a special night as well. Not only the home opener, it was also youth night here for Huskies and uh, in, in youth football. And, uh, David, thanks. Let's take a show. look at the, uh, the next uh, this broadcast schedule coming up for QCTV. They also offer packages for weddings, special events. And, and coming up too. on uh, tomorrow will be the Ramsey Happy Days American Parade. Family Joe, are you doing that? Marcy uh, no, I don't believe that I am. Okay. That, that's why it's going to be happy <laughs> <in> Ramsey. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back here in Andover on the 12th and 14th for uh, volleyball. As uh, That'll be a good one. Maple Grove and Andover, Forest Lake, Andover. And next weekend, uh, out of our viewing area, it'll be Anoka and Blaine. And Joe, I know you'll be there. Thank you. Yeah, looking forward that Steve Thompson I believe has the mic on play by play so that'll be fun I haven't been to the Blaine field in quite some while but it'll be good to watch that matchup by the way Jason Strasser gave me the numbers for the uh, number of teams that they had and, uh, and they had 405 players in tackle football for oh. youth night the snap between the legs gonna hurry to get it off and finally they do but it went straight up. Did he get a piece of it or not? But nonetheless, this is a good chance right here. Yeah. They can strike first. Good for the Huskies. I was just mentioning the youth night, youth football night. And so uh, total uh, for numbers, 405 are in tennis here in tackle, 95 in flag. So good turnoff for that youth football and a good funnel for Andover High School's hockey. Excuse me, hockey, football. I got hockey on my mind. Uh, so that and also tonight, don't forget it's been tackle cancer tonight as well, the Randy Shaver campaign. And uh, that's been a success in the, the call out there. Well, good opportunity here for the Huskies, only th on the 35 yard line. They're not trying to let the big fella Denicky at 6'5 outrun and outreach for the defender. Denneke. Uh, defended well on Number that uh, Colton McGregor, on the, McGregor on the coverage. If we take a 401 to go. Quickly line up again, all about the tempo here for the Huskies. But you're right, Jim, a lot of the cramps. Just kind of, kind of trying to break out of that pack, reached back for and grabbing the jersey. Maynard. Of Maynard. All oh, right there, the the, the Scarlet set six. Uh, defenders in on a blitz, and really Maynard had no time to breathe. Uh, free rusher right there on number 82. That was um, uh, that was uh, Osberg. Well, this miscue on the punt gave the Huskies a great opportunity to try to score. Quickly, which they did in their first two possessions. Looking for an opening, almost too long in that pocket, trying to stay in that pocket to make the throw. I understand that's good for, for Maynard, but he had nowhere to go as Maynard they caught up and then tossed him down for a sack. That'll take us under three minutes. Well, the, the, the rush right now is in Maynard's head, and there's nothing, he, I mean, honestly, he's 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 been uh, running for his life. He's, he's trying to to kind of move over, but there's nothing he can do right now. Huskies jumped out 7-0. Mankato West matched it at 7-7. Huskies went back up top 14-7. Both those touchdowns via a touchdown pass. Pemberton. Plenty of time now. Now look here. Trying to find it. Sees a gap, puts his head down, and he'll be far short of that first down. Just nothing. Limited receivers. 
out on the pattern, trying to keep in more of the blockers. Another tackle by number 87. Uh, he had to Daniel take off and run to see if he could get it, and maybe try to pitch something out to Davenport, but no one was available there. So that's turned over on downs back to Mankato West with two and a half to play. And it, that would probably just about do it. Yeah, Mankato West to come in here and uh, be able to take the Huskies out. Uh, impressive and to keep them scoreless. I mean, granted, I know they've got a backup quarterback, but uh, impressive outing by the Scarlets tonight. Snap back, handover, and then handoff here. Set Brousseau again. Bouchard, yeah. yeah. That was probably his longest run of the Jack night at seven 11, yards or six Duke yards. Kennedy, number seven, Caleb Michael. Well, yeah, Bursaw again handled the ball about 15 times last week for 41 yards and two TDs and their win over Northfield, 42 to nothing. The Huskies a big win over St. Thomas Academy, but the Huskies about to go 500. But I got to tell you, this not to have any disrespect to any of their other opponents this season, this is probably one of their most challenging opponents Andover will face through the regular season. Well, this is the one of the top two or three teams in 5A. You, think you put Chan Hassan in there as well. Um, Elk River's probably a little bit a little bit of a step back, uh, but uh, you know it's uh, it, it's going to be the Huskies. The uh, you know Rogers is another one. That's another top. They've got some just outstanding defensive players. And you hope you'll. See. We're not sure the condition with Pemberton, but that certainly even though Maynard has done a great job coming in, just to have that quarterback who can sling it the way he can yeah. gives you that uh, ability to throw deep on the run, brought down a couple. by number seven Caleb Weichel. We Weichel I think has had uh, at least 15 tackles tonight he has been in, and it might be just in the second half alone he's been all over the place defensive line has done a nice job you know with the exception of really those two runs those uh, fourth and shorts that have gone for 40s uh, and a touchdown defense has been pretty solid in Cam Begali with two touchdown receptions passes from Pemberton those two came in the first quarter back in it again hard run was running like a bull to get to the outside and that will probably be the final play of the game as a 35 21 win tonight here for Mankato West as they remain undefeated, the Huskies move to one and one. And uh, as you mentioned, Jim, travel north to Cambridge, Isanti. Well, I'm, I personally cannot wait to see hopefully both these uh, two teams uh, lock up in the playoffs again. And uh, I think this uh, could be one of those semifinal final matchups again. So let's take a look here quick. Also, we got a player of the game coming our way as well. And then uh, let's take a look here. Uh, that's a, there, Cam Bagali. 77 took it to the yards. House. Yeah, 77 yards on that first uh, um, touchdown, the third play of the game. And he had three catches, 103 yards, and two touchdowns in that first half. And again, a nice run after the catch. And this is the toe drag swag as he's thrown open by Pemberton. That put the Huskies up 14 to 7. That was just in that first quarter. So, but definitely an uh, impressive effort, play of the game effort uh, there for Cam Bagali, wide receiver for the Huskies. Coming up, as we mentioned, the schedule, you're going to look at the Huskies traveling to Cambridge, Isanti. Then they host Elk River in a repeat of the 5A section championship. Spring Lake Park on the 29th, followed by St. Francis traveling there on the 6th. And then on October 13th, Sock Rapids Rice here, back here in the backyard of the Huskies home. So, so Joe, I got to tell you, I'm not, I don't feel, I, I look at the Huskies and I don't think any differently than I did coming into the game. Uh, this is, the Huskies are going to be a tough team to reckon with the rest of the season. They have, they've sustained some injuries even before the season started. Look at the Mankato West, they go to Waconium tomorrow, then they, the next weekend, then they uh, host Chaska. Then they go to Chan Hassan, another top team in class 5A on the 29th, host Owatonna, and then they take on their rival, Mankato East, on October 
13th. And we hope the injury tonight to Pemberton is just temporary and not too serious as that would add to the injury pile. Hey, I'm Joe Rulin. Thanks for joining us along with Jim Giles. It's been high school football on Friday Night Lights, an impressive game. as. Been